Tyr prepares for war. It musters its troops, sets old grudges aside, and forges new alliances in preparation for meeting. <laughs> no, it doesn't do any of that, no. Tyr descends into bickering power plays, seizes the chance to settle old scores, and generally renders itself completely incapable of mounting a defense against one of the most powerful and dedicated armies on Athas. Oh, if only there were a group of well-intentioned heroes who could be manipulated into carrying out all manner of unethical activities in order to get the city ready. Wait a minute. Um, that's exactly what happened last session. When Tyr's noble families dragged their heels at providing troops for the war effort, just send a heavily armed band of player characters to persuade them otherwise. A few threats, a few empty promises, the entirely unjustified decimation of business rivals and ruination of an entire generation of merchants. These are small prices to pay to ensure that Tyr is able to meet the threat posed by Uric. Now, having thoroughly compromised themselves, crossed moral lines back and forth, and assisted a corrupt regime in cementing power in the city, our heroes are faced with the consequences of their actions. Sometimes those consequences are a surprise barred in the bedroom. Sometimes they are the loss of self-respect and value. Sometimes they are far, far worse. Ra. You have spent the last couple of days doing good, honest, back-breaking work in the fields. Helping the farmers of Tyr get the sharecropping and government farming program spearheaded by Matthias and Agus up and running. Nori, a uh, little old human woman she sounds like she's about 90 years old. Is leading you back from the fields, holding your hand. This way, dearie. Through here, you're in the, you're in that big fancy villa in the, in the nobles' quarters, aren't you? I know the way, I know. And kind of pats your hand as uh, she walks. Oh, thank you. That's really kind. Oh, no, look. You've done the work of 10 men and a hundred of my husband. <laughs> oh, he's lovely. Well, I console myself with the fact that one of us will be dead soon. Better him than me. Anyway, you've done us a, a great favor, lass. Uh, just, just putting you back straight into it. We'll not forget this, what you've done, and what what Master Matthias here has done as well. Oh, it's it's the it's the least I can do. Um, well, if that's the least you can do, then I'm going to be impressed when I see the most, aren't I, lassie? <laughs> Pats your hand again. Thank you again for leading me back. I really, really do appreciate it. Oh, not at all. And here, you have these, and she's trying to stuff something into your hand. Um, you can see it's like a little shawl, and in it are wrapped up cookies. I mean, they're like the size of your thumbnail for you, but um, there's about a dozen of them. You, you have this, just a little something I made. You have them. You, you, you have, have it Have it with some cigarette milk before your bedtime. It'll settle your stomach. <laughs> Thank you, I will. They look, well, they smell delicious. Mm, yes. Well, family family recipe, that is. All right, then, uh, young Cecilia, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Thank you. See you soon. And uh, she heads away down the street back to her uh, toward the less well-heeled parts of town. As you're walking through the gate of the villa, um, I don't know if you've seen the map of it. Actually, I'll stick up and roll 20 for you now. Thank you. That's it at night time. Yeah. Um, you spot Bengal Bengal is sitting in the shade of one of the, uh, the yipper palms by the well idly toying with his singing sticks, swinging them back and forward. So he, I, can, uh, I, can, I can hear the singing sticks then? Yeah, you can hear the... Is that you, Bengal? Oh, thank God you're back. You have no idea how bored I was. Well, I, I have cookies, so that's great. Ooh, yummy. And I <laughs> go over to her and, and you know, hug one of her legs, I suppose, <laughs> wherever I can reach. <laughs> With my spare hand, I'll, I'll, I'll pat his head. <laughs> How was it? You feel well... crusts, of, crusts of dried blood in his hair. His hair 
feels like it's been burnt. Oh, are you alright? Physically? Yeah. Emotionally? No, not at all. Oh. Do you want to talk about it? I mean, there's not much to talk about. We've ruined the lives of several people living in this city, and, uh, I mean, there's nothing we can really do about it now. Oh, well, we do that all the time when they place bets on us. This wasn't the same, though. We were... We were doing someone else's dirty work. It... It had no glory to it. Well, it's for the greater good, though, right? There's that. Yeah. If you... If you say so, but... I'm not so sure anymore. Anyway, I I don't want to bum you out. You've just gotten back. Let's uh, let's go have these cookies, yeah? Yeah, they said to, to have milk with them, so we yeah. should try that. As you uh, walk through the um, through the courtyard and into the main house, the rest of you are out back dealing with the body. More specifically, what do you want to do with it? Someone whom you suspect, probably quite rightly, to be a Tirithani bard. How do you intend to deal with the uh, the, the dead body in your garden? Bless you. I looked at Tin and say, I think your idea works best. Take it, present it. It's so unfortunate that that house was working towards that assassination of a previous ruler. So sad. Agreed. I'd say use your contacts, spread the information a little bit around before, make sure that there's a little bit of a murmur so that people are already starting to kind of suspect. And then the bard here is the proof that they were trying to stop any type of investigation into their house. That alone with uh, the connection should stop any more rumors that we care about. I don't see anything wrong with this. They did want you dead. You think? And I'll look over to the uh, the weapons and stuff that were taken off the body. <laughs> yeah. I suspect just a little bit that that may have been their intent. Corrodus is at this not point, here, is uh, she? No. Well, uh, that's up to Carl. Uh, that's up to Carl. She goes, it's perfectly fine for her to be there, especially if this is following hard on the heels of uh, of her time in the library, she might wish to share what she found oh, yes, to be there. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what, but is it just after the attack or already a little bit uh, like next morning or what? Early the next morning, yeah. Oh, then she will be uh, 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 announcing herself because she's found the stuff from the library. And okay. she will be, uh, yeah. Well, at the same that. time as one of your servants then brings word that the Lady Corodius has arrived, um, Ra and Bengal Bengal come walking through the, uh, the gaps between the houses. They appear to be um, eating cookies, actually. Good morning. If Bengal Bengal's walking up, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna walk next to him and say, it's more dirty business. Unless you want to be more involved. What are you planning to do with it? Use it to bring down House Terthani. What is it? It's an assassin who tried to kill Matthias. Really? Terthani sent the bard? Yes. Oh. We killed it. So, congratulations. So by tradition now, you're supposed to send one back, right? I was going to send myself, but I think it would be best used to plant this, this thing on the house. He had sent a bard to quieten us, 
This is Tin's idea. It's rather clever. Oh, oh that is very clever. Yeah, it's that clever, way you can... but it's sneaky, and I'm staying the hell out of it. Why I want you? That's actually a really good idea. <clears throat> what I would actually consider is to make that a little bit bigger, because a house on its own against Kalak would not be very believable. But you could tie it nicely in to uh, the attack that we had with House Tell, also with Bards. And that would tie it into Uric. At this mention of making it bigger, um, I'm going to lean down to uh, Bengal Bengal and say, uh, my way kept somebody alive, but I think you had the right idea. And I'm going to walk away towards uh, Ra. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm eating cookies. I'm not dealing with this business. <laughs> Not today. Not today, Satan. <laughs> well, first things first. Thank you for the raid for Carney's Sideshow. Welcome, people. Thank you very much. Greetings, raiders. We do have a giveaway going on. We are sponsored by Kraken Dice. So, exclamation mark giveaway will enter you in for a chance to win some. So, thank you very much. Okay. So, as I understand it, Matthias, you are going to use your various contacts to spread a whispering campaign that, in fact, Tithani's name is in the frame for the Kalak assassination. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That'll take you most of the day to uh, to get through that. In, in, okay. Involve, ha involve House Stell. Everybody hates House Stell. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I might sort of put, like, a bit of doubt into House Stell as well. Yeah. Okay. So then, and combined, you know, and then there's a sponsorship from Uric, and it makes it more believable. I think that's the, the way to go. It's a very clever idea. You should you had felt it. It was a good idea. It was a very good idea. All right. Um, anything in, during the, the day from the rest of you? For the three gladiators, by the way. Um, shortly um, after. Hold on. For the three gladiators, shortly after breakfast, a messenger arrives at the house. And. Uh, invites you for a meeting with Rikus at the arena at your convenience today. And just out of curiosity, how are we doing physically? Because some of us have injuries. I'm messed up. Yeah, um, since your uh, encounter with the Bard, you've had a little bit of time to rest, but primarily the fact that you've uh, enjoyed the benefits of leveling up. So I wouldn't concern myself over the injuries. We can assume those two have been taken care of. Good stuff. Yeah. I liked that. Um, in that case, um, I'll look at the uh, the other two. Well, Ran Bengal. Well, if uh, you two aren't doing anything, we go now. Might as well. Um, be before you go, I, I do have some news about the weird corpses that we have been researching. Go on. So, <clears throat> um, these constructs, they're constructs, uh, psionic constructs, um, are called elans by what I... Um, uh, managed to f figure out and they are attributed to a mysterious organization called the order it's an organization of psionicists and they're very mysterious i couldn't find much about them except that they're elusive and they have their own agenda and they meddle all over uh, in uh, society this is all I could come up with, but it is interesting because we saw them on both sides of the current conflict between Tyr and Uruk. And actually at points where they're actually pretty important in the information uh, streams towards both parties. Anything, we, something we should consider. That was all. 
The only other thing that would probably be worth mentioning is that the order, they're not just an order of Sinusis, they're extremely powerful. Yeah. On, on par on, on par mm -hmm. with the city state, right? This is Yes. Yeah, yeah. The individual members of the order are reputed to have psionic powers only the sorcerer monarchs possess. Right. So they are a, 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 a powerful player in the yeah, global exactly. politics. Yeah. Um Constantine and uh Carodius. Anything for you during the day? Um, I'm I'm gonna tag along with uh Ra. Oh, the gladiators. Yeah, okay, to cool. have a conversation with her. So um Um Kyrodias then will um, um, how how far is it on the date that her uh, shipment is uh, is going to be arriving? You've got about another five days, five or six days. Okay, so she can't be busy with that. Uh, in that case, she will uh, go and um, uh, ask for uh, uh, arrange for a, a meeting with uh, the king. Yeah, about the investigation. Yeah, that to prepare them that we can uh, move on that uh, as uh, soon as the group is ready to do so. Okay, and maybe, good. Maybe, maybe convene a meeting uh, to announce to the city council uh, the results of the investigation, something like that. Yes, exactly. Okay, right, I'll get to that shortly then. Um, okay, so back to the beginning of that. Matthias, you uh, head out into, uh, into the city and begin doing the rounds of various noble families, uh, uh, your contacts in a number of temple bureaus, even uh, the merchant houses, and winding your way back through the Warrens, where you've spent, of course, several days already performing and handing out largesse to stricken people of that place. And putting the word out that, make sure I understand this correctly, that House Chirthani and House Stell of Uruk were together complicit in the assassination of Kalak. That's the legend, is it? I believe so. Okay, good. Um... You make it home uh, intact, shall we say. You're aware during the day that there is a fair crowd has been gathering uh, by Shadow Square, and word has it that some um, some preacher is going to be speaking uh, tonight when the moons rise. People are all actually, in fact, not super fascinated by your story. Most of the talk around the market is of this holy man who comes to a uh, to share his wisdom in tear. For Tik Tik, Ra, and Bagal Bagal, you head out toward the uh, toward the arena shortly after breakfast. Constantine comes trotting out the gate after you, uh, catching up to uh, just stroll alongside. Sounds good. I guess as we're walking up. Um... <clears throat> You're like, uh, Rod, do you have a moment for, uh, some words? Uh, can do, uh, do you two mind? No, we'll, uh, just wait for you up ahead. Okay. Miguel, Miguel, you, you get down from Rye, I presume? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, like, <laughs> sat on the top, like, yeah, what are we talking about? What, what's, what's um, the gods? So, kicking um, your legs, like, like go I'm on. not even here, just continue. <laughs> Feet kicking, do 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 do, do. Um, this big, uh, could you take a knee so I could actually speak to you? And she will, uh, she will take a knee and kind uh, of lean forward, like, as she, to where she assumes he is. Yeah, as she starts to lean forward, he would just make, like, a click noise, like, so she would just be able to hone in on, uh, where he is. And she's like, um, I know you're looking for somewhere to belong. How long do you want to look? Um, and, until I find the place. So not soon, but years, if needed. Uh, I mean, hopefully soon, but yeah, I guess if it takes that long. Um, and he'll put his hands up on your face, like he's it, you. You would know this being blind that he's actually getting measurements for your face. Um, we may need to talk with someone about having your horns removed, if you want to do that. Yeah, before I... they grow into your brain and kill you. Huh? 
you do realize they're going back. And once they hit your brain, you will die. It's why when you hit your head against that nice drunk gentleman, you felt a lot of pressure and a lot of pain. You were pushing them further back into your head. But then when they'll stop though, right? They won't. When will they stop? I, I don't. Will it be don't... before or after? Um. Um. I mean, how? How won't. If we Plus, get them. Each time you hit and hit, bone breaks. We also don't want the horns to break and be driven further into your head. Well, if, if we if we get them removed, won't, won't I just have holes in my face? I will have something made to protect your face. Did you honestly think that I was going to recommend something like this without making sure you were safe? I mean, people are already a, are kind of afraid of me. Won't they be more afraid of me if I didn't have them? I will make sure that it looks aesthetically pleasing. It will be like a like a blindfold. It'll look like you're just covering your eyes. Um, um when would it be? Was it is it safe to remove them? Well, thankfully, when bone grows in, the skin heals around it and creates a pocket. So it's safe to remove them, just not to drive them further in. I'll have pockets in my head. <sighs> Out of character, why did I recommend to a woman that be pockets? <laughs> why? <laughs> You're saying I can have pockets? <laughs> I don't know if I can come back from that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bagal Bagal and uh, Cons and, uh, and Tick Tick, it's fairly clear that whatever, well, you can see it clear and clearest of most Bagal Bagal, whatever Constantine is talking to Ra about is deeply concerning. But, uh. What's what going on? I don't know. But, uh. I'm not sure if I like it. Who would we talk? Who, who would we even talk talk to? That's the trickier part of what I'm trying to figure out. I don't. Uh, somebody who's already adept at cutting through bone has tools that can do it properly and safely for you. I don't want them to be putting a lot of pressure on you just cutting through. And then from there, we can have the blindfold molded to you. So that way it'll be a proper fit. But it's a concern that I've had because I didn't want you to not be here to find what you're looking for. Um, if, if they... If, if I get a blindfold and it comes off, can you tell me? You have my word. I will let you know if the blindfold ever comes off. Okay. Um, is it gonna happen soon? And she starts, like, grabbing her horns and almost, it almost looks like she's trying to pull them <laughs> away <laughs> from her face. No. Um, n n no, the fact that you were recently took a really hard hit to them and felt pain but not you didn't pass out. Um, we have a little bit of, we'd have time, but I'd rather do it sooner than later. Especially if you want to be the death dealers, you know, it's, uh, they would, uh, you know, we'd want them to be able to recognize you. So we'd have to do it soon enough so that you and Bengal, Bengal could uh, continue to um, be min and max. See, I, when I was going to bed, I heard you kind of talking to yourself about getting them removed. I just kind of assumed that was to 
stop people being able to recognize us. It doesn't seem as much of a concern to me anymore, considering how blatant and obvious we've been about the fact that you are Minimax. But the secondary, primary concern is the one that still is eating at my mind. Okay. Um, well, if you find someone, let me know. I, I just gave, um, uh, one, one, uh, platinum to Matthias for the farms, um, but I still have, like, a good one and a bit left. I, I will never charge you for this. I would, I will pay for whatever the cost is. Oh, well, it's for me. I'll pay for it. It's a gift. I will pay for it. My idea, my cost. Okay. But you have to go be a badass right now and a hardcore gladiator. And I am not. So I will start looking for somebody that can do this. And Mark, that's what Tin will do with the rest of his day. <laughs> uh, okay. Tin leaves you. Tick, tick. Bagal, bagal. And Ra. You make You're your way. On some on some jerky. Okay, nice. Give me some. I, I give some to Bingo. Nice. Yeah, I, I'm just sorry. Out of character, I I feel like another Avell situation is gonna happen, and we're gonna get like you, but you've put on some weight. <laughs> like, Don't say that. <laughs> oh God. I would like to point out too for Bingo, Bingo, who was watching. Um, Tin did not look happy during the conversation and walked away yeah. looking kind of like uh, he's not. He's not happy about this, but... It, it, it seemed, from what he was saying, that it was not a very light-hearted conversation, which is why he's a little bit concerned. But, uh, <laughs> hey-ho, now's not the time. So we're just going to continue, I suppose, eating right. jerky. <laughs> Caravan Way, where it meets Science Square, is busy. People... Uh, is a doesn't quite feel like a riot, but it feels like there's unrest bubbling in the air. Groups of individuals don't appear to be having anywhere to go. Low murmur of conversation. You hear the name of uh, House Syntha mentioned a few times. There seems to be some uh, displeasure at the pricing policies they're setting. Uh, but there's a, an air of excitement that a council of Turloff is supposed to be um, dropping by to have a few words with the craftsmen and try and get the matter under control. But this is very much a situation uh, as yet budding it is not yet reached its full flower, and you, unless you have other intentions, work your way past, make your way to the arena, where before too long you are admitted through to the great level area of sand. You haven't stood here since the day of the Grand Malay, and uh, you barely recognize the place. We'll get on to why shortly, and just leave you with a framing shot of your three faces like. Whoa. <laughs> and then uh, we cut to Chirodius. Your audience with the king happens rapidly. You are brought up into uh, the council chamber he's been using as an impromptu throne room by the hall of um, the hall of administration. There's a couple of his flunkies down the far end of the room. Harna nods at you as you enter. Tithian beckons you over to the high table where there's sheets and maps and lists of equipment and troop dispositions and the full flooded preparation for war. She takes a good look at it uh, if she gets the opportunity. Yeah, it's a mess. Uh, there aren't anywhere near enough troops as, uh, as they were initially, initially hoping for. Cadodius. Yes. You requested an audience. Yes. I just came to inform you that we have uh, come to uh, <clears throat> a resolution uh, which we would like to propose for uh, the matter of uh, the investigation. Ah. Um, Outstanding. You have results oh, for me? I think so. Uh, it does require your approval as it is beyond, of course, my authority to uh, make an accusation of a noble. I see, and uh, which noble has fallen under your iron gaze? 
Well, we were in a uh, process of our investigation and um, yeah, this is where um, we um, were actually um, accosted by um, a bard sent by House Tirthani. And since we were also being accosted by bards sent by uh, uh, House Uric, uh, we have come to the conclusion that they have been in league in trying to overthrow Kalak. Tirthani in league with Uric? Haustel, to be Haustel. exact. Haustel. <clears throat> It's a little uh, unbelievable, but it will uh, it will play to the right populist themes, mm -hmm. yeah, the greedy nobility and the infiltrators from beyond. Yes, exactly. I think we can make this work. And it will actually also provide for uh, a nice link into an argument that we need to uh, uh, provide more um, help uh, into this endeavor here on the table. Yes, well, we're going to sacrifice the Tirthani troops for this, you realize. They'll never give us anything if you do this to them. Uh, unless he's no longer there. Well, then the, the house is dissolved. Uh, the men are, are free to do what they will. Um, unless the king confiscates? I don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. No, do you see the trouble I'm having getting them to give their troops willingly? Hmm. If I were to start uh, commandeering them, absolutely not. No, um, we will simply sacrifice the Tirthani troops. It is a price worth paying in order to sink Turak's investigation. Yes. We can always hire them, uh, the troops that have come uh, free after the dissolution of the, the, the house, as mercenaries. Yes, this is a possible solution, should they wish to remain in this field of conflict. We will see what the treasury can provide. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. I have, uh, then of course, to get your endorsement in the accusation of a noble, uh, I have no such authority. Leave the matter as it is, we will take it from here, we will announce that the Royal Commission has uncovered such a judge, and it shall be so. Good. Um, at the moment... Do you, have, been... do you have any supporting evidence? You said there was a bard sent against you? Yes, a bard was sent against, uh, uh Matthias, um, he was killed in his attempt to kill uh, Matthias. And of course, we had the bard attack uh, of House Stell outside the gates, which of course the guard was there to witness. Yes, yes, no, I will have Captain Zarko testify on that account. Um, uh, very well, I will send two, um, two junior Templars to Matthias' villa to retrieve the body if that's uh, acceptable. I, 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 I presume it is, yes. Good. You have become quite the operator, Cardarius. Hmm. Thank you. That's high praise. Hmm. Yes. High praise. Yes. Very well. I shall call on you if we have further need. Thank you. And I think... You can feel him just staring at your back as you make your way mm -hmm. out of the chamber. Just at the arena. Yes, go ahead, please. Um, a massive thank you to Blue Box RPG for 500 bits. Um, oh, says, outstanding. Thank says, you. Says, thank you. I'll have to mainly watch on YouTube and the VODs with my game time in, so I'm glad I found you. Um, 500 bits, uh, Blue Box gives one of the characters a D20 inspiration. We don't really use D20s or inspiration in um in ad and d but we're sort of allowing this sort of thing as a thank you to people so um someone rolled a natural 20 who was that uh constantine wins the d20 inspiration so remember we can only have one of these at a time you can store them so you thank two. you very much <laughs> has he got two? Oh, you got a two. Oh, i got a two yeah yeah that's a terrible <laughs> that's I'm, I'm sorry i was actually not paying attention because i lose so often <laughs> i was like yeah congrats to whoever <laughs> you said 10 i'm like what do you what do you want yes how can i help you <laughs> but thank you very much well Blue Box. congratulations thank welcome you. to the channel very cool um so the arena itself filled with gladiators 
you never knew that Tyr had so many of your kind. There are maybe a thousand of them in here. Maybe more. Everything from halflings to cream to mool. Lots of mools. Half giants, humans, half elves, elves, Bazrag, Gith, Tarek, Tari, I mean, the, the full gamut of Athazian races are represented. No sign of uh, order or cohesion. How on earth Rikis is going to get these people trained to fight as a single unit, as opposed to, behold, my pecs, um, is going to be, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's well, take it's a simple. <laughs> We're going to have a training montage. <laughs> it's like 80s music or something. It's going to be great. Trust me. That would... We're going to play Eye of the Tiger and then it's yeah, yeah. going to happen. Seeing you uh, arrive, you see Rikus waving you over. I wander over to him. Yeah. Okay. He's in conversation with Sidira and another gladiator. A uh, guy with a thick handlebar moustache, mutton chops, and the well-honed physique of someone who's used to physical combat. Uh, thank you for coming so soon, Rikus says. No worries. You uh, had time to have some breakfast, I see. Yes. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got some jerky there. He points to where, indeed, there's a small piece of jerky has become lodged in one of your feathery bits, Fangal Magal. Oh. Yeah, um, Rob I was panic... that for later, actually. Rob panic wipes her mouth in case there's cookie crumbs. <laughs> like... <laughs> Would, uh, like you to, um, assist me in a conversation I'm having with the High Templar Banthler, the Templar for the Games. Okay. What he looks say? over. Well, he needs persuading that gladiators aren't necessarily ready to start throwing their lives away again. I thought that the gladiator games were decided to be non-lethal. That's not actually been decided. The beefy man with the uh, the beard and side, uh, the mustaches and sideburns next to him says. The importance oh. of. Uh, blood combat in front of a, an appreciative crowd cannot be understated on the social cohesion level and also the economic benefits it brings to the city. Right. Oh, okay, I have solution. <laughs> What's that? Rikas asked. First blood. I told you. The uh, mustachioed gentleman shakes his head. It's not enough. We need to see something better. In case it wasn't clear, Rika says, this is High Templar Banther. Right, well, it's uh, good to meet you, I suppose. Yeah, you've never seen a Templar without his robe. Certainly not one who's stripped to the waist and oiled. <laughs> Listen, Panther says. You know what I was before I was a Templar. I know how it works here. Blood is all that matters. He turns to, uh... To Min Max. These two understand, right? No, they don't, Rika says. They're here to support me, not you. He turns to you, right? Oh, for fuck's sake, guys. Um, listen, uh, I'm speaking for myself here, but I'm going to listen to both sides of whatever you have to say. And, I mean, we have certain priorities right now, you know? Rikos, we've spoken about this before. The, the war coming, you know, we, we cannot afford for people to be just dying, especially not the gladiators. Right. I understand what it is like to be in gladiator combat, though. I mean, we all do. We all understand that. We all know what it's like to draw blood and to be a victor at the end of the day. 
But then again, times are changing. Maybe it doesn't have to be so lethal. Right, Rikus says again. You see? Short in stature. Grand in vision. The halfling gets it. Also, I don't see your fight. I'm looking at the at the Templar. You, you will. You want, you want to fight to blood? It wouldn't be the first time. What about the other Templar? They want to fight? Do the crowd want to fight? To death? No, they want to see you do it. That's the point. I want to see them do it. Give me two te- two rounds. You know, I'll entertain. Attra- attractive as that might sound, and I can think of a few people who I would suggest that you have your bout with. I'm being serious. So are we. It is our life. What about you, half giant? I've seen you tear people to pieces in the arena. You understand how important it is for the crowd to see that? Um, I do. Um, I know that it it sells tickets. Um, but, uh, I know that sometimes it's a bit too much for some people. And with times changing, some people, you know, sometimes don't want that. Um, I, I tend to leave the the business to Thingal, honestly. Well, they both said what I said they would say, Rika says. I'll say one other thing, though. I mean, as Ra just brought up, it does sell tickets. But where is that money going? It's not to the gladiators. I mean, before this, we were slaves. We're free now. Don't you think that if we're putting our lives on the line every single time, we should at least get a cut? We should at least be paid for it? All matches will be paid from now on, Bantha oh, says. Also, I have very good point. Tyr need army. These best warriors in Tyr. You waste best warriors on silly gladiatorial game so you can have fun. We need to fight Uruk. Well, that's what your halfling friend here said, and that's what Rikus has been saying to me all afternoon. All right. I'm convinced. You're the most respected up-and-coming gladiators in the city. And this crusty, I'm just this, crusty, this crusty old kank here in Jack's stomach, Rikus. He's a bit of an old guard, but hearing the same answers coming from uh, both ends of the spectrum, as it were. I I hear you. But, I mean, special occasions? uh, A celebration? You're out of the question. I just don't want my friends dying over and over again. I mean, I suppose that's still a conversation we have to have. You give me something I can work with. Thank you. Until later. Panther turns and strides away, chewing on the end of his uh, of his mustache. <sighs> Templars with delusions of grandeur. Thank you for that. Well, at least they're listening. All right. Well, that'll be all. No, it won't, Rika says. No, it will. That's enough. Look, you dragged them all the way out here. At least ask them what you said you were going to ask them. Not this again. This looks really uncomfortable. Okay, all right. I need to have a conversation with you and all of your companions. But before I do, I need I need your opinion on something. A, um, 
what should I call it? Strike force is being put together. I'm going to have my hands full commanding the Crimson Legion here. I need your recommendation. Specifically, I was going to ask Constantine. And what would you be asking him to do specifically? Need a group to find and destroy the Veil of Stone. The artifacts that's, that's hiding among his army. Right. I mean, we could ask him if 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 he wanted to to meet with you, or maybe we could arrange um for for you to meet him somewhere. Maybe I'll just come by the villa when I'm ready. I wanted you to lay the groundwork for me first. Is he just going to say no, and I'm going to have a wasted trip? Is he the kind of person who could do the job? Oh, Tin can do anything. Um, but I wouldn't feel right speaking for him. Yeah. He could do it, but, I mean, no one really knows what's going on in his mind except for himself, so you'd have to ask him. He's a great man, though. I just heard some interesting reports of his approach to tactics and strategy that I think is what I'm looking for. He's very smart. All right. You'll see me uh, at the villa before too long. Thank you for your input and for your support. Stay safe. <laughs> he turns and walks off, and as they're, as they're leaving, you can hear Neva saying, told you, you just get so knotted and twisted up sometimes. You've just got to let it go and say what's on your mind. <laughs> oh, we break. How we stone. what? How we break stone. Uh, not sure. It, it made of, uh, magic, ma ma na na magic? Ma yes, ma ma magic. Well, I don't know if the details are hashed out yet, but, uh, we'll get there when we get there, I suppose. You wind your way back through the city. The crowd on Iron Square has gotten noticeably larger. Uh, there's a huge mass of them gathered outside House Synthas gates, shouting and yelling. And uh, it doesn't take you long, actually, to spot just standing side by side in the shadow of a, a wine cellar's awning are Matthias and Constantine. Your villa's only a few streets away from here. The noise has brought you out. And the pair of you have been sharing a, uh, a small carafe of Astacles wine, watching as the crowd amasses and the mood sours. The general background is not too hard to pick up. The craftsman faction newly united as part of the Council of Advisors, is certain that various merchants are hiking and gouging their prices in the run-up to the war. And they have identified House Syntha, a mid-level merchant house, as one of the worst culprits. And there is a huge crowd of them gathered right now. Been massing all throughout the afternoon in Iron Square outside the uh, outside uh, Master Simpson's Emporium. Ra, Tick Tick, and Bengal Magal, as I say, you spot the pair of them sharing a shady glass of wine. A roar goes up from the crowd. And on a wagon that's been pulled out into the middle of the square, Councillor Turloff, big burly guy with a shock of blonde hair, flops over one side of his head. He's taken a stance on the back of the wagon. Craftsman of Tear! We are being robbed! And there's a yell, Ah, robbed, robbed! 
levels its fingers at the gates of uh, House Valex, Simpson's Emporium. These leech bloodsuckers are dropping their prices one day, they're raising them the next, and they're leaving us parched in the middle. Are we going to take it anymore? No! The cry goes up. We are going to stand here and we are going to blockade this house until they listen to us. Um, you can see the gates of House of Alex have opened ever so slightly and a tight knot of armed men. Shiny black chitin armor. Forging their way forward, straight toward the wagon on which Turlock is standing. Ah, we see, you see, Master Finn, Master Cinder sends his thugs to silence me because I'm speaking the truth. One of them yanks hold of his leg and pulls him sideways off the wagon toward the crowd. Uh, you can see the guards, as the crowd closes in on them, the guards reach for their weapons, start to draw them amongst the, uh, the craftsmen. You can see people hefting mallets, pulling out blades. It looks like it's about to turn ugly any second now. Anything you guys want to do, or are you going to just uh, stand and watch the fun? There's Turlock being pulled off his, his wagon there. We can do this peacefully, please. And and she she will be yelling that to, to the crowd. And and I, I like to think she's maybe one of few half giants, so maybe she stands out a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you 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 stride forward and shout that this. We can do this peacefully, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Finn's um, going to get some high ground. You can easily drop up a couple of steps onto the side of one of the nearby buildings. Um, as you stride forward, uh, Rai, you can hear Turloff's cry, indignant at first, but then panicked. Get off me! Let go! No! 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 Stop it! No! Put that away! No! Don't! Don't! Um, so, Ra strides forward. Constantine, you get to higher ground. The rest of you? I wait and see what happens. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I go forward with Ra, but I don't do anything yet, but I'm just there with her. Okay. Matthias? I'd say arrow knocked on Tin as well. There is an arrow knocked. Gotcha, Tin. Um, he unclips his whips, and the plan is, is anyone that sort of goes to strike someone with a deadly blow, I'll try and whip the weapon away before they do that. Okay, well, there are blades being raised on all sides. It, it, it looks as if people are gearing themselves up for that moment, for that actual strike. Do you I want to wait for it to come, or you can step in? I'll just wait. Okay. I know we're all angry, but let's just talk. There's no need for a riot. We can settle this calmly, okay? There's no need for anyone to be hurt. Ra, can you make me a quick charisma check and roll 20, please? Oh, God, I'm not charismatic. All right, I'll give it a go, though. Oh. So let me know if anybody's starting to bring a weapon down on someone. Yes. Uh, just a charisma. Uh, yeah, just a straight charisma roll. This, this is why <clears throat> Tic Tic is not engaging the crowd, because... They will all die. They will all <laughs> die. Is, is my adjustment a reaction? It just says react. I don't... Yeah, roll react. The Roll the react, please. <laughs> okay, a six. All right. Uh... I don't know if that's good or nice. bad. That's very good. That's very good. Oh, thank God. I thought that was bad. I was like, oh, no. AD&D has a really great reaction system, but the numbers on it are weird as hell. Uh, oh. For a moment, at least, uh, around you, there's a, a brief lull. You can hear someone shout, oh, look, look, it's Min Max. No, that's Death Dealer. Yeah, well, I was into them before they were Death Dealer. Faces turn in your direction, silenced by the booming thunder of your voice. The uh, guards from House of Alex form a, a tight knot around the end of the wagon, blades bristling outward. They have Turloff, one of them actually down on the floor next to the wagon, held down by the scruff of his head, a blade pointed at the back of his neck. Let him go! shouts one of the craftsmen. Let Turloff go! shouts another. Free him! Look at one of the guards looks up at you. They take a step forward closer to us. I'm putting bone in his brain. I understand. But the man just wanted to speak. Okay? 
There's no need to hurt anyone. The moment you hurt him, they are coming for you, okay? There's a lot of people here, and everyone's upset, but there's no need for this. We can sort this. Why should we listen to you, the guard says. Because she worked two days without rest in the fields, shouts one of the craftsmen. Yes, shouts another from behind. And, 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 and her halfling friend, you don't want to get on the wrong side of him. These are good yeah, people, yeah. shouts a third. We're just trying to make this place a better place for everyone and with less violence, okay? From his position on the ground, Charlo, you can hear him gasping for breath. <coughs> we just want, <coughs> we just want fair prices. We can work this out. Just please lower your weapons. I ask this of you for your sake as well. The guards' grip on their weapons relaxes. Around them, the crowd moves uneasily. You can still see hammers being gestured at them, blades of obsidian and bone pointed. Let Turlough go! Let him go now! The guards look to each other, and at which point a voice calls from the, uh, from the walls of House Balax. Would um, Councillor Turloff wish to join us for some water and fresh fruit? Corodius, you've just kind of finished your meeting of the day, idle onto Shadow Square to see this little uh, drama in the offing. At the appearance of, uh, of this gentleman who's got a Lord, a conical hat and a thin little moustache. Do I know him? Uh, that is Master Syntha, the head of House Vanex. They're a moderately successful Tyrion trading house, mid rank. He's um, been, yeah, he's been playing all the angles um, since this entire thing started, and it's uh, it's caught up with him. Ah, okay, so he's he's guilty of what, they, what he's being accused. Oh, of. oh absolutely, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. I, I look. I look at the at the the, uh, the the group. What they're doing at the moment. Uh, Tick Tick is just watching. Uh, it is clear that Constantine and Jade are poised to. Uh, J Constantine and um, Matthias, sorry, are poised to spring into action. And as usual, uh, Ramba and Gal Magal are in the thick of it. Okay. One of the the, the guard who's holding Turloff down helps him to stand. Master Cynthia invites you uh, to an audience. Tolop straightens <clears throat> his ruffled clothes. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure that would be entirely safe. Bring your bodyguards, Cynthia says from the gate and gestures toward uh, Min and Max. I go uh, stand next, next to Matthias and, uh, and, and Tin. Look, okay. I, 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 I'm sure he just wants to talk, Tolos says, but, but it would be good to have someone watching me back. Um, can I just ask a quick question? Yes. Out of character, sorry. Um, do we, have we heard of this gentleman who was, you know, making these... Uh, the names, the names are new to you. Um, Turloff is a, 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 he's a member of the Council of Advisors, uh, lobbies for the, for the craftsmen, uh, of the city. Cynthia okay. is a similarly mid-level merchant trying okay, to make so, a killing. So he's trusted to know what he's talking about? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I, because I was going to say, I was like, I hope he does if he's going to try and turn to us for political advice, I was like, <laughs> maybe get someone else to come with you, but if, if he's capable of doing that on his own, then that's fine. I just wanted yeah. to make sure. I think he okay. just wants us for bodyguards. We're, okay. not, we're not very bright, so, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, if he wants us there, then I'm fine with going, as okay. long as Rai is as well. All right. Yeah. Are you um, mentioning any of this to your companions, or are you just going to follow him straight into the um, into the into the Valax compound? We have a, we have more friends. If you want more guards. Um. Oh. Oh no. Yes, that's a very good idea. Yes. Um. Smart lass. Yes. Please. Please. 
all the all the backup I can uh, I can handle. Ra turns to Bengal with like a huge grin on her face, and she's like, "He said I'm smart." <laughs> I know. I heard. Congratulations. Um, and then- yeah, and I, I suppose I I turn around to where Tick Tick's standing, and I sort of see if he's interested. Wave that you wave the others over. Yeah. I I yeah, follow. Yeah. What what happening? We're uh being bodyguards. Who is this? I'm not quite sure. Some guy. Master Tuloth. D- yeah, how, how tall are the walls? Of the Synther compound? Mm-hmm. They look about 20 feet high in that picture. Okay. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going. Okay. What about the rest of you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Tim going. will uh, put his arrow away. All right. is, and, is, Master uh, Sin- is Master Sintha still standing on the battlements? Uh, he's come down now. Okay. And uh, if you so allow it, the guards lead you and uh, Toloff, who's looking considerably more relaxed. And actually, he starts to clock who is, is indeed who it is indeed that's with him. Oh, Matthias! Oh, uh, I'm, I'm so glad you're lending support to this, sir. That's, that's, that's very good of you to take time out of your busy day. It's the least we can do. Oh, and uh, and uh, Templar Carodius. Um, uh, thank you very much. Oh. This is a trade dispute after all, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that it is. So, the guards take you through the sally port into the House of Alex compound. Master Cynthia is there ostentatiously with a, a quill and a notepad, making uh, mathematical com- calculations and absolutely not writing at all. Around him, the agents of the House of Alex are in a flurry. You can see statues of grain, wood, heaps of uh, untreated bone, shards of ceramic. Um, you can see what at the back appears to be a small pallet with uh, a dozen iron ingots on it. On the other side of the courtyard, foodstuffs of all varieties, piled high, primarily dried. How big is the compound on the inside? Uh, the compound's about 50 foot across. Okay. And this is all food? Some, oh, yeah, some food, some, uh, uh, as I say, bone, chitin, stuff that can make arms and armor out of, although not the actual arms and armor themselves. Some ingots of iron. Um, uh, Curious makes an observation. Is it basically stuff that uh, are going to be shortage because of the war? Yes, he's stockpiling them. You've yes. known you've known yourself that these things are uh, are low priced in the run up to war, and once things get going, presumably that will change. Ah. Craftsman tell off. Cynthia glides over the courtyard to meet you. So sorry about that little bit of trouble in the in the street. My men were just supposed to invite you in for a um a little discussion. He looks around the, the rest of your group. That's entirely what this was. It's a misunderstanding, that's all. How many guards are here? Oh, you see a dozen inside the compound. About half a dozen on the ground, another half a dozen on the walls. They have they have arrows? The ones on the walls do, yes. Look, Cynthia, it's just, it's just the prices. I'm not going to dance around the subject. It's just the prices. They're too high. All right? And look at you in here. You're sitting on half the reason that they are high. Come on, man. We, 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 we've got to put bread in my mouth. Yes, well, I, I'm, I'm sorry. That's just, that's just supply and demand, uh, Tom. Uh, can you roll me a uh, an ESP check, please? Getting secret messages here. Secret, secret. Okay, nice. Um, you feel the sonic probe splash up against Synth's mind. It's like looking at an accounting ledger. The numbers insanely complex columns upon columns upon row upon row and your mind just gets lost in it and the ESP fails to uh, strike. Okay. 
Cynthia's attention snaps toward you. Well, that's extremely rude. <clears throat> We've had some concerns. I just wanted to make sure. Some concerns about what? Certain allegiances. But I might not be trying to turn a, turn a profit. Cert certain, allegi certain allegiances. Of I have allegiances to the coin. This is the claim that House Tell has made. Uh, please don't waste my time with this nonsensical rumor. You, you will see later today how just how nonsensical that rumor is. I will see later today exactly how the power politics in the city works, you mean. Hmm. <laughs> Where House Tell gets bunched on, on the pile, you could be bunched too. Be very careful what you, what you wish for. Anyway, you were speaking to, uh, to, to the council here. You, you bring your pet template in here to threaten me. He looks over at Matthias. She won't be as lucky as you were. Regarding I'm what? Vildine Tirthani is, I'm surprised that Vildine Tirthani is alive. You're showing a remarkable lack of backbone. Oh. Well, maybe you were in on it as well then. Uh, so unimaginative. Please, I'm already going to have, try and have your fr Templar friend here assassinated. Don't make me spend the money to have you done as well. So now you're threatening us. Wow. It's not a threat at all. She knows full well the consequences of coming into a great house and levying insults and threats at its owner. These things must be answered. I would have thought you would have known that. At any rate, I've no interest in stoking unrest in the city. Yet you have done so, nonetheless. I suggest we come to an agreement. Ah, but then you should have opened your statement to the councillor here with a different uh, statement. You were not going to give him anything. That was your opening statement. I was just being present here and evening out the odds for the councillor. Uh, you were doing like you were holding all the cards. I'm making sure that he gets some cards too, and he has some cards. And you have now been notified of this. Uh, and damn your bard. Oh, you'll have a chance to say that to her face. Sure. Not a very large chance, to be sure, but a chance no. nevertheless. Toloff, I suggest you put together a consortium of, shall we say, uh, council-approved traders. I will then offer members of that consortium a competitive discount on any goods and services they wish to purchase through House Balance. Shall we say 20%? You, of course, will decide who is on your consortium. Toloff blinks once or twice. Uh, tw tw Twenty percent. That's um, that's quite a lot. Yes, for your consortium members, of course. How many consortium? How many consortium members would he be able to pick? Oh, I know. I'd want to keep it very, uh, very exclusive. Um, Twenty percent is uh, that's a steep discount. I'd want to keep that very much. Um, yes, yeah, a small, a small select group. Yes, really? a small select group, exactly. Really? Herodias <laughs>, laughs. <clears throat> so, so much for uh, representing your people, Councillor. Yeah. Shall we go um, out uh, out there and announce the solution you have come up with? She, uh, she, she doesn't speak for me, Toloff says, and he oh, visibly takes a couple I, of steps I, away from I, you. I, I will, when I go outside these doors, and this is the deal you will straight strike. I'm sure Matthias has something else to say about this as well. Hmm. We'll see when we get outside, won't we? Hmm. Well, all right, all right, Toloff says. What, what do you suggest then? Well, let's make the discount a little bit less, but all across the board for people who are members of um, the union of um, craftsmen. So that it becomes affordable again to do business. A bigger group, a smaller discount, Tempest mm -hmm. says. Yes. Corodia, uh, uh, 
Turloff actually looks disappointed for a minute. The, uh, his brief dreams of corrupt, ill-gotten gains draining away before your eyes. No, I suppose, uh, uh, I suppose that's just... Yeah, look, uh, that's this, a good is, this, compromise. this is a, a good deal. He, he looks disappointed and he looks disappointed. Generally, then you know you have a good deal. Yeah, cunning mind, Caradius. Simply says. Perhaps I should have offered you a job instead. Uh, 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 my house is open for offers. <laughs> Come, tell off. Let us uh, share the good news of our agreement with with our people. And uh, they head up to the wall and to a surprising number of cheers announce the latest layer of corruption to be installed in tier in the run-up to the war. You can't even walk home from the arena without getting pulled into it. But there is a, at least a promise of a, a meeting with Rikas later this evening that might shed some more light on, um, shall we say, cleaner pursuits than politics. We will, however, get around to that after our break. <laughs> so you put House of Alex and Master Synthus compound behind you, and with it the icky, icky feeling that comes with dabbling any body part for any amount of time in the murky waters of Tyrian politics. In your afternoon of searching around the healers and apothecaries of Tyr has been a successful one. A little bit dusty and travel weary, you'd stopped to uh, share a wine with Matthias before the events outside the House Valax compound kicked off. But uh, now as you and your companions leave, uh, you realize, of course, that you actually have some news to share with Ra, should you so desire. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll walk over to Ra. Um, have you thought about your horns at all, or is that something you wish to go through with? I, I mean, I think I need to, right? You don't need to. If you choose not to, then... I don't want to die. Neither. I don't want you to die either, but... You know, it is your choice. So I did find someone that can do this for you. Um, we could go as early as tonight. Um, let's do it then. Well, yeah. why not, right? I will go, uh, I will go with you. So I will, I'll hold your hand the entire time if you want. Is this something that we are witness to, this conversation, or is this something you the, 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 It's literally as you're walking along together, away from uh, from house, from house oh. synth and back across Iron Square toward, uh, I mean, presumably, Bagal Bagal, you're like on Ra's head. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm also like, like, what the fuck? So, uh, what, what is happening? I don't know. Um, Ra, do you want to tell them, or should I? Um, uh, Tin said that my horns are killing me and that I'm going to die. So I did I, not put it like that. So, <laughs> that I, so that I need to get them removed and then I'll have pockets. There's a lot missing there. There's a lot missing there. Her horns are still growing. They're going to grow into her brain. We are going to have the horns removed so that she doesn't die. And I have already oh purchased, I already have purchased a um a chitin uh protection for her eyes as well as the uh the cloth that uh to protect it it's something i've been worried about for a while because as she keeps getting hit in the face or somebody manages to break them they are going to drive into her brain and kill her and i think we all agree we'd like her to have as long a life as possible she will have pockets though but it, it's because the bone won't be that, that's a set it's they're not pockets they're just going to be empty holes 
he but but we're gonna get a cover to cover it so that um so that I, I won't scare people. And so and and Tin will pull out the massive <laughs> giant sized uh chitin um protection for her eyes and it's wrapped in a really really um like a dark blue look at her picture um silk cloth for her to tie on makes sense maybe okay. the silk cloth park can have pockets okay carry on so unless any of you have any any more uh more you wish to uh to share on the response to uh, to constantine's uh, revelation the question really is are you going with them well of course i'm going yeah i'll i'll go too Carodius? did the templars come and pick up that body uh you don't know you've been out okay um, um yeah I, I actually did I, I didn't notify you that that this is what actually what they're going to be doing but um oh, okay. mark yeah. i would know from talking to the uh, person will getting the horns removed uh hurt there will be some discomfort, yes. Discomfort or pain? This is very important. <laughs> pain, discomfort, these are different things to different people. I don't know. I'm pretty good with pain, so that's why I'm trying to gauge it. In <laughs> she will definitely feel it. Uh, um, uh, Shadow Square, that's close to where the bars are, right? Uh, you're, you're approaching Shadow Square. You've come across from Iron Square and are heading between the buildings towards Shadow Square now. So it's not far from the bars area, yeah. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I will make a very quick sidetrack to uh, <clears throat> my contact there to inform him that I might need a favor that I have been selected maybe for uh, uh, the visit of a bard. Okay. And that I require some protection. This is Suko Toothcutter. Yes. She tries to hide her laughter, but can't. Mm-hmm. What is going to happen sooner or later? Uh, yes. Who sends it? Mm. How Sinta? I see. Mm. We will arrange protection for you. Thank you. Where will you be this evening? I will be with these people. And... Um, I presume we're going back to the estates after this, right? Yeah. Yes. Matthias is known to us. We will um we will arrange protection for you. Thank you very much. Damn, I wish I knew about that. She she catches up with the rest of you. Um I may have mentioned earlier on actually Shadow Square is uh has been seeing a, a growing crowd of its own that day. Talk of a, uh, a preacher who was supposed to be holding forth that evening. And now, in fact, as the first of the moon's great guthe, golden and soft, crests the walls of the city, you can hear that he's actually in, uh, in full throat. And I'm pretty sure I have a picture of him here for you. Um, there we go. People of Tyr, hear me, he's saying. You are being deceived. In your blindness for freedom, you have only traded one tyrant for another. Gone is Kalak the murderous. But here is Tithian and his lying counsel. Even now they lie and plot against you. Were you not told that an army marches upon Tyr intent on destroying you all? That if you did not rise up and take arms, the, the evil King Hamanu of Uruk would slaughter your men, torture your women, and enslave your children. Was this not the truth, you say? I tell you, these were lies. Who among you has spoken to King Hamanu of Uruk? Who among you has asked him why he comes to the aid of riots torn tear? Only those, your counselors, who claim he is an enemy. Only those who wish wealth and power is threatened. 
anyone can, by the way, feel free to speak up or interrupt at any any time they like. He leans forward, impassioned, toward the crowd. King Haman, who comes not to enslave you. He comes to free you from your slave lords. Even as far as distant Uruk, he has heard the cries of the oppressed and injured. And these cries moved him. Who among you feels safe at night from the gangs and thugs of our elected councillors? Who among you will speak out against this tyranny and stand against this unjust war? Resist injustice. We must fight the true enemy. There's a... Is that why he's hidden his army from us? Head snap in your direction, and your head and shoulders above the entire crowd. The preacher I, locks I, eyes. I, I, I ESP the preacher immediately at that point. Okay, you can make me another roll, please. Fight, fight, Better fight, than fight. Last time. Outstanding. Um, his mind is an iron wall. Um, I'll talk to my party and um that's that's two successful uses of the of the power. So don't forget to be deducting the points for those. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll I'll say to our group, um Templar Rack, that voice, that man is the one that was talking with him. He's the one that I shot through the Achilles. He's the one that disappeared. The agent of work, yeah. Ah. What is this hidden army you speak of? As faces turn in your direction, the preacher tries to seize the initiative back from you, Bengal, Bengal. How can you hide an army? This is preposterous. See? You're talking we... about a sorcerer king. He's capable of anything. What a surprise. Tithian sends his champions. Isn't that what he called you? Champions? Tithian has no part in this. I'm doing this out of my own volition. And oh, you oh. are trying to scare these people into following you you're just as so, bad as the rest you're paving the case you're paving the way for king Armano. we see what you're doing nobody believes exactly. you there a voice calls out but he said Armano wants to save us it just we're starving but he's a, a look uh i see how have your legs healed so well what I look, a healer did a remarkable job on your legs. How's Templar Rack, by the way? I don't know who you're who you're speaking about. Are you He's sure? one of the Templars for Shadow Square. Shouts someone helpfully. Yeah, I don't know him. You sure? Hmm, that's that's odd. Does he have marks on his legs, like where he's been shot? You can't see from this distance. He's on the far side of the square. We'll get closer then. You so you're kind of moving your way through the crowd toward him as you're speaking. Mm. Yeah, his legs seem completely unblemished. You can actually see little tatter marks where the clothes would have been pierced, but there's no injuries on his skin. Remarkable job it there is, that it is, did. It is, it is clear that Hamanu does not send an army. It has not been seen in the desert. And one halfling's claims that it can be hidden by sorcery? Oh, <laughs> come. We know Ooh. these for, for the deranged well, imagining forest savage. You, you posited the question, has anyone spoken to him personally? Well, have you? Do you know what his intentions are fully? Really? Are you trying to insinuate that you speak for him? You. I, Don't make no. me laugh. It, um, it, it stands it's, to reason. Does it? Really? What reason? I, and you can see a number of the people in the crowd are like, yeah, that's a, that's a damn good point. Someone actually leans up. That's a, that's a good point, death. Who? Or men? Is it death or men? Uh, Bengal. Uh, oh. <laughs> now you're just confusing people. <laughs> you, can see him, you can see him realize he's just been told your real name. Just 
a fanish beam covers his face. I kill him. Tell me his name. <laughs> and then he turns to shout at the, at the preacher. Sorcerous kings could hide an army if they wanted to. And 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 yeah, why 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 are you so why are you so keen for us to not believe it's coming? That's that's just something that an agent of Uruk would say. He wants he is an you agent to of be Uruk. unaware of the coming threat. He wants you to be unarmed and unprepared so that Uruk can take over Tyr again and make it into another slave state again. Do you want that? Do anybody here do any of you want that? And no! I mean, right now, things things are not perfect. But keep in mind, this has been going on. We have been free for not very long now. We are trying. All of Kirodias us is, uh, is, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, Carl, please. Carry on, Lucan. We, we have all been trying together to make this work. All of us. The councils, the people, everybody in this city. We're working together... And that's what we need to continue to do. I understand it's not perfect, but it's much, much better than what we were. Looking in all directions as you speak from atop Ra's shoulders, you can see realizations creeping across these people's faces. The easy and angry statements of the preacher, sure, rile them up quick. But there is a genuine truth in what you're saying. You see nodding heads and affirmation passing back and forward. And uh, uh, the preacher begins to look really, really rather nervous. Carl, what are you, what are you saying there? So, sorry, yeah. And, uh, while this is going on, Kyrodius is starting to uh, look for some uh, kank dung or something to dish out to the public so he can start, start throwing it at him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As you start kind of gathering together, there's a couple of people near you like, oh, yeah, good idea. <laughs> start... <laughs> It's a big pile over here, over here, Mago. Come on. <laughs> it's lovely filth over here. <laughs> oh, lumps of it around the back. <laughs> and they, uh, yeah, start gathering together surreptitiously, passing it back and forward uh, down the lines. Listen, the preacher says. Listen, let us not be swayed by the... By the and there's a... a uh, that's a nice roll. A, a pile of pile of countdown just... Splat flies out of the crowd and splats him in the side of the face. Oh, oh, it's in my mouth. Oh, and then another and another. And fairly rapidly, um, the crowd has turned from adulation to jeering dung throwing. And as they fling yeah, considerable bye. amounts of tank poop, uh, the, uh, the preacher leaps down from the barrels in which he's standing and pulls his hood over his face, wiping it um, at the uh, affront to his dignity and starts to scurry away from Shadow Square. Okay, can I jump off of Ra's shoulders and try and follow him? Oh, you're going to hurry after him? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I will follow after Bengal. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, what, what about the rest of you? Him yeah. is um, um, going warned, to as well. I've warned them that he's a master of the way. What's most the likely. way? Silence. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I knew that. And Tin, you're going as well, you said? Uh, yes, yes. Hearing that, I'm gonna Ra try to hide in shadows as well, he though. He might be a master, but we can't just let him get away. Hearing that, Ra might slow down just a little bit. <laughs> oh, okay, right, and Tick Tick? I'm following. Okay, and Matthias? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Good, okay, so, um, from Constantine, please, can I get a hide in shadows roll, please? I'm assuming you're wearing your, uh... Of course, of course, it's the only way he... I will uh, also hide in shadows. Urban collection. Today! Yeah. Constantine is modeling taupe, mauve, it didn't and help. brown. I will also hide in shadows, so. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing the runaway walk. That's the problem, Constantine. Well, uh, yeah, well, I, I still rolled way higher than the 58, so he's just, at this point, he's just running like a madman. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like, guys, I'll do it quietly. <laughs> the runaway walk where you put your feet on the wrong side of your body. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you see my role? Right, you uh, hurry after him down the small alleyway. He almost immediately, of course, uh, hears you coming. Can I let fly some arrows? Spins to face you. And in that moment, there is a split second of recognition, Constantine. 
You had arrows knocked. You're a specialist, so you can fire before initiative happens. Uh, uh, one or all three? One. One. No, that's that's sad. That makes me cry. Okay. Um, is he uh, human? Uh, he actually looks like a half elf. For, now you get close well, up, close enough to him. His well, armor yeah. class is his armor class is twenty. Oh well, that shouldn't present too much of a problem. I hope. He's a elf. Twenty-two. Nice. Okay, arrow streaks out straight toward him, and you can see it deflect actually off the side of his face. And there's a brief puff of grey dust as if your arrow had struck stone. Hmm. Oh, let me roll my initiative now. Yeah, and if everyone could uh, give me an initiative roll, please. Yeah, was oh, wow, that's garbage. And just to check, we are trying to attack him, not chase him, right? It's up to you. The initiative roll just determines kind of when you're acting, so. Right, uh, Bengal, Bengal. I missed Eight. that. Sorry. Eight, Constantine. Uh, Eleven. Probably because I'm surprised at the first one. Um, Eleven, oh. Matthias. Uh, seven. Or six if... Tick, tick. Uh, eight. Kyra Dias. Eight. And Ra. <laughs> the unluckiest number. Thirteen? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to ask, can I roll my armor proficiency now, or do I have to do that in my turn? Uh, we'll assume it's rolled now. You have a dex of twenty, don't you? Uh, yeah. So that automatically happens because there's no penalties to you. So yes, um, you <coughs> readjust your feathery bits and um, raise Music's down the working again, by the way. Where the oh good, okay. With the uh, the figure is retreating, it's been glitchy as hell at my end, I tell you. <laughs> okay, um, he backs down the alley, finds a, uh, a a nearby set of barrels, pulls himself onto the roof. And as he lands on the roof, on his hands and knees, you can see him close his hand around something in his breast. Lord Haman, who hear me? Lord Haman, who grant me this gift, this blessing? Of course, of course he's a Templar. Uh, that was on a four. On a seven, Matthias. He's about a hundred feet away from you, down the alley, and up on top of a, on a neighboring building. I am still in the shadows. I just head after him and get as close as I can. Okay. And um, I mean, I can move 15, you, so. That'll get you uh, 75 feet is your combat move then. So you can get, you can get, you can catch up with him yeah. uh, or you can get within 75 feet, within 25 feet of him and then do something. If I catch up with him, am I still hidden? You are still hidden, yes. I'll do that then. All right. So you scurry along the street, flat against the wall. He's directly above you. You duck in the shadow of the barrel. The roof overhanging is there. You can just see the, the end of his feet sticking out from underneath the roof. And you're flat against the wall right underneath him. Okay. Um, in a deadly ballet, all on eight. Bengal, Bengal, Tick, Tick, and Kyrodius. We're so synchronized. It doesn't have to be a ballet. It can be any form of modern dance. No, it has to be ballet. Are you kidding? Um, I don't mind who goes first. I think... I think would be more of a tap dancer. Anyway, um... <laughs> a tippy-tap dancer. Yes. Have uh... you seen the, uh, the stick bug dance? That's kind of what <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. imagining of Tick Tick right now. <laughs> Just the... Anyway. I will give you guys a combat mind and quickly. And oh, that cool. just gives you, gives you a quicker... Uh... quicker reaction speed. So Nothing we're all special. synchronized a little bit quicker. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so does it give us like, a bonus? Plus one to initiative, I think. Yep. Successful. Oh, so we're all just on seven. Yeah. It's just it's just an issue, is it? Yeah. For how long? Minus one for as long as I keep it. Okay. Um as long as you maintain the power. Yes, correct. Okay, right. So that's five rounds without any without spending any other points. I believe so, yeah. Okay. Um and what do you what the what do you, you two do, you two gladiators? I'll let you go first. Oh, thank you. I know. Um, so I think that um, 
uh, Tin obviously tried to hit him with an arrow and it didn't work, right? It just bounced off him. There was something, yes, odd going on there. So I can't use my darts because I don't, I don't think it would hit. Um, can I use my psionic ability against him? Yeah, sure. Roll for it. Okay, ballistic attack. Oh no, you oh. fail to fully focus your mind. Um, there is a brief puff of telekinetic force in front of your nose, but it goes no further than that. You do not lose any uh, psionic points, however. I just sneeze um, are, instead. Yeah, are you going to use your movement to keep pace with him as best as you can down the alley? Yeah. Okay, so that puts you uh, about another 30 feet down the alley way toward him, and that just leaves Tick Tick. Okay, um, how far away is he? Um, from where you are, he's 100 feet. 100 feet. Um, he's quite literally come off Shadow Square and has gone racing down an alley in the direction of the heart of the Warrens and gone up. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything on the roofs that I could maybe um, cause to fall in his path? Like, I don't know, a tarpaulin or. A... Absolutely. Tar tarpaulins, uh, uh, ill secured okay, towers, so bricks, woodwork. Yeah. He is. Uh, too far away for me to reach him with melee, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a chatka instead and try and sever the ropes of tarpaulins or any kind of things that can fall on top of him and block his path. Okay, nice. Uh, um, make me a, an attack roll with the with the chatka type, we'll treat it as a CMB check. Okay. Um, sorry, I need to actually do it. Twenty-one. Okay, nice. Um, you snag the side of a, a rope holding a tarpaulin in place. The chakachar goes through the rope, comes whistling around to your hand. Uh, the rope swings loose. The tarpaulin unfurls itself off the top of the awning that it's on and slams right into the guy. And he disappears off the roof, wrapped up in tarpaulin briefly. You can hear him shouting and yelling from inside. Okay. Does he land at my nice. feet? Okay. <laughs> uh, he doesn't find land near your feet. Yes, uh, Constantine. Muted. So he's just on the ground here, uh, wrapped flailing in around in, in in sheet, trying to get himself loose. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so I we heard him praying, correct? You did indeed hear him calling out a prayer to Hamanu. Yes. Okay, I'm going to try to put two um, arrows through his throat. Okay. All right. Uh, you can treat him as armor class sixteen. If you're if you're if you're deliberately aiming for the throat, treat him as armor class twenty four, and you'll automatically inflict maximum damage. I'm just trying to shut him up. He ain't getting. Oh, sweet! As a 35 hit him in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what's I'm max dam what, what's max, max damage for that? Um, eight plus four. Uh, it's just twelve. Twelve. Just twelve in the throat. Just, just twelve. <laughs> Do you want a lozenge? Right. <laughs> um. You quite literally step over him, and you can see the arrows going through the tarpaulin. Um, he neither cries out in pain nor s slows down his uh, his frantic struggles from inside. And finally, Ra. Am I able to kind of catch up to him and be in range of him? Uh, yes, you will. That will take your whole action this round, though, because you're wearing your armor. Unless you're not wearing your armor, in which case you can be there and act. I would be wearing my armor. Yeah. So you make um, all the way over to where he is. Um... And that, that's uh, that's your full your full round. Initiative, everyone, please. That's scary. Okay. He's on six. Right. Bagal, bagal. Or with uh, as long as um, Kyrodius is still using the yeah the thing. thing yeah. Cons Constantine. If Karodis is using the thing, I'm a three. Superfly. Matthias. Two. Wow. Four, oh, three, two. Tick, tick. Can I have used some of my movement action from the last round to close some of the distance? Yes. Uh, okay. And then my, mine is five. Oh, you ruined the... Uh... Okay, Karodis. What did I ruin? I was going four, three, two. I was hoping you were going to get a one, but no. Oh. Okay, Karodis. Five. <laughs> five. And Ra. 
So, it, sorry, is there is the minus Minus five one is still ongoing, yeah. Oh, minus and one. Is five four. Yeah. Oh, sorry, minus one, so then that would make mine five. Okay. I should be minus... My, with the minus one, is on four, sorry. On a four and right on a five. Okay, Matthias. Um, with him leaning, obviously stuck in the tarpaulin beneath me, yeah. I will... Uh, just run my dagger through some nice juicy poison for him yes and try to stick it in him okay you stab again uh you can see the poison spreading on the tarpaulin but it's like it's grating against stone underneath there it doesn't actually appear to be penetrating his skin at all constantine oh. uh, i guess what i'm doing would consider is is he still able to pray to haman <laughs> uh who knows it'll be it would be harder for him being bundled um, up in this damn thing. He's unlikely to be able to get any spells off. Well, then let's make sure it's a possibility. So I'm going to launch all uh, three more arrows at his uh, throat. If one of them hits, then I'll stop. But I mean, why, why stop? I'm standing basically right over him anyway. Yeah, okay. Um, all three, thwack, 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 stud home. But they're just not getting the penetration. You can see them going through the tarpaulin, but they're clearly not going under his body underneath. Um, Bengal, Bengal, and Tick Tick at the same time. Um, so he's, he's all bungled up, right? Yeah. Um, can I try and hit him with the Sword of Camelot? Like, through? Like, can I stab? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You step up at stride, strike, but again the blade, although it cuts clear through the, uh, the tarpaulin, you can actually, you can literally hear it scrape as if against stone underneath. And tick tick. What the dang heck? I know, what um, the dang heck? Yeah. I, uh, I'm going to pounce on top of him. And unleash the the, the, the blur. <laughs> unleash the blur. Go on then. On um, the ground, his on the ground, his armor class sixteen. Okay, and I'm I'm using my body weight to to pin him down as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're either attacking him or you're pinning him down, or you can use one of your attacks to to hold him in place. I meant like jumping on his body with my feet. Okay. So. Just using yeah. But, but, okay. Okay. I mean, I'm 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 gonna attack him. That's my main purpose. If I can't that's pin him fine. down, that's too bad. We're just d d deciding what kind of rolls you're making here. Okay. So, claws first. One, two, three, four, five, and I'll finish it off with a bite. That's all hits. Okay. Oh, there's the bite. Yes. Um. Okay. So. Uh... You said sixteen, yeah. Yes. The first claw again scrapes against stone, but the subsequent ones start to deal damage. I and now you can hear him screaming. I do non-lethal damage. Ah, okay. So maybe he's not screaming so much. It's more like, hey, I, ow, stop, that's smart. And I, well, I will, what I will try to do is try and um, uh, paralyze him with the bite, but I also want to uh, make sure he can't uh, speak or use his hands. So I'm going yeah, to okay. focus so, my attacks on those things. All right. Um, you can't actually see his uh, any of his limbs and stuff, given that he's inside the tarpaulin, but you wreak a variety of horrible injuries upon him. And give me some damage rolls, please. That 19, yes, by the oh, way, is his, that's his save against poison. So the bite, uh, oh, okay, the bite fair does enough. not paralyze him. Uh, there, 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 there. While Arnold's doing that, a massive thank you to Pixie Three, four, five. for 500 bits. That is a D20 inspiration. Uh, oh, Tin yeah. already has one. Let's... So let me roll that. 39 points of non-lethal damage from the claws and 80 points of damage from the bite. Forget the first claw doesn't doesn't do damage, yeah? I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't count that one. Okay, okay so 13, 39 non-lethal? 39 non-lethal from claws and 8 from yeah. the bite. And 8 from the bite. So, nice. thank you very much, Pixie. Bengal Bengal wins the D20 inspiration. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice. Thank you. I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Super generous. <laughs> Uh, okay, bagal, bagal, tick, tick, and then finally, uh, Karodius and Ra. I, do you want to go first? I don't mind. Oh no, you can go. Okay, I will um, charge at him with my Lutulus um, and try and hit him. Uh, so I think I get three yes. attacks, right? Uh, you get, yeah, two with the main end and one with the offhand end. So, sorry, one one with the main and two with the offhand? Two with the main and one with oh. the offhand. So it's a oh. whack, whack, and then the back end. Or, 
yeah, all hits. Perfect. And he's a medium. He is a medium. Yeah. <laughs> you did so, cool on default. Slashing forward. <laughs> that is forty-four plus eighteen because my brain isn't working. Uh, okay. Um, and these 62. are the, these were lethal or non-lethal? I didn't catch that. Sorry. I mean, I don't. I. I I think they're lethal. I don't, okay, fine. I, I okay, don't recall good. being told not to kill him. How yeah, many limbs does he lose? That's true. Okay, and finally, uh, Corodius, while this is happening, for their action is at the same time. She uh, saunters over to uh, the head of uh, this hapless individual and sits down and puts her two thumbs on his eyes and said, Yield or I'll press. Uh, he bleeds and doesn't say anything. Why, Mark? What happened? What possibly did I, did, could have happened to this young Did man? a half-giant happen? Oh. Splat. <laughs> <laughs> Dear. You, you realise that you're holding the head and... Uh... As, you unfold, as you unfold the uh, the tarpaulin, you can indeed see that the it's been shredded finally and Tick Tick's last set of attacks have torn his midriff open and there are huge Latulus injury, injuries um, Across his uh, across his body that take Tick Tick's uh, semi non lethal attacks um, and just simply stamp all over them with large pointy bits of metal. Um, Corodius, <laughs> uh, he is unconscious and bleeding out. Unless um, something is done to, uh, to 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 staunch his bleeding, you know that he will die within moments. I am not using the magic sword on this guy. Um, it, it's kind of necessary if you want him to live. <sighs> Do I want him to live, oh. though? I said, Tin, can you bind his wounds? Oh, sorry, did we want him to live? I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> um, it's like I can try. Off the <laughs> I, I can try, and I will... Give me a healing roll. Do my damnedest to do a healing roll. I have herbal in them as well. I don't know if that helps me at all. Not in the short term. No, we're screwed then. So, um, oh, the perfect <laughs> roll. Look at that. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, you ace your uh, healing score perfectly, uh, patch up the Latulis wounds, um, break a small swelling salts canister under his nose, and <coughs> the man comes to his senses and okay. stares around himself in uh, some considerable distress. Okay, he I makes any me. move, you just... Oh yeah, yeah no. I, I have I have my my various arms holding him down. I, I jammed oh. something in his mouth so that he can't uh, pronounce any any things. Oh, oh, oh. Let's march him to uh, the bureau of security, shall we? I I uh, truss him up like a chicken with the tar with the tarp. Okay. And you go to hand him over straight away to uh, to Harna. I think that's probably the best. Okay. Um, it's a bit of a diversion from your original planned outing for the evening. But with Corodius's escort, you are soon within the Golden City. You track down Harna. And she is more than a little surprised to see who you brought with you. Nobody stopped you just walking a body through the Golden City, Harna says. Um, probably because I was present. We did it like Weekend at Bernie's style. Either that or they're getting to know you. Who do we have here? Come and bring him in. She brings you into the foyer of the Bureau of Security. Almost immediately, uh, armed guards step up to keep a close watch on the body. He has uh, a knowledge of the way, and he's a priest of the land. So I take, do, do take due care. The Templar of the Lion. Yes, he's the one uh, that uh, they met. Hanna looks up at you. You have met him before. Where have you seen this man? Well, he was talking to Rack. He was in the alley speaking with Rack before he got filled with holes and 
other things. Yes, of course. And this is the this is whatever simulacrum had taken Rack's place. Yes. Indulge me for a minute. Why would a temple of Uruk be receiving information from whatever this thing that Rack was? Um, this thing that Rack was uh, is called an Elan. An Elan? Elan. What, is an, what is an Elan? It's a form of uh, psionic simulacrum, uh, a construct. And what I, from what I gleaned from the library, um, it might be working for the Order. What the the Order? Order the the, the, the order, mind order. the mind benders. Yes, them. I didn't think they were real. Ah. So, Rack was in Elan and was feeding information to this Templar of Uruk. Yes, and uh, but the lady was in was Elan, in, exactly. But feeding information to us. Mm -hmm. I so, like not how this sounds. Sounds like their order is playing us off against each other Clearly. and wanting a war. And feeding uh, the right information to the right parties of both sides, yeah. I like not the feeling that we are manipulated into war with Uruk. But I know not how to make this case to the lion. Can you not ask his body to speak the truth? Some spells or something that you guys... Oh, he is alive and we will have the truth from him. One way or the other. It's, it's an interesting concept to realize that the... How Stell went out of its way to expose Lady Liamina in that respect, didn't it? Yes, Craybite confirmed that his mission was to kill her but to expose her. Yeah. So, how Stell. Mm, no, no, no. No. Craybite was not hired by House Stell. Oh. They merely carried him here. He was hired by Salavar Lubar. So maybe Haman already knows. <clears throat> what, and this was a message to us? Well, maybe, I don't know. Some, some, some of our must know, clearly, right? Do you think Salavar could be looking for a way out of this? I don't know. I cannot think that Haman would pass up an opportunity to take another city-state, manipulated into it or no. Exactly, and the iron is too much of uh, an interest of him. City-state or not, I mean, yeah. And I don't know to which uh, level his ambitions rise, but <clears throat> the cigarette is still standing here, ready to be used. <sighs> not speak of such things. Constantin, do you still have contacts with Salovar of Lubar? Anything. I can reach out to a few people. Pretty sure if he knows some of us are alive here and I reach out to the wrong one, we're gonna have more fun on our step than we wanted. But I'll I'll put out the proper missives. Good. It might be worth hearing what he has to say about this before we meet him on the field of battle. So you don't want me to deliver it? via arrow through his eye. I understand that is what you would desire. But he sh he chose to expose his wife. Yes. That speaks of an intent to reveal to us something that he knew. Do we know anything about him on, on which side within Uruk's faction he stands? No, oh, he stands in the shadow of the lion. Yes, the, the House of Lubar has been at the heart of uh, Hamanu's armed forces for generations. 
But I'm, I'm presuming there are pro and con factions against this war, or not? None of the two would have the wits to uh, to speak uh, speak out about it. Hmm. I thank you for this. We will take what information we can from this spy. Constantine, if any, you... Do you have any please. information on who is still in his council? I'm sure you have spies beyond what you were provided. The this one? Lady. She points at the figure on the table. He is new to us. We will find out with whom he is connected. If it is only Templar Rack, so much the better. This looks to have been a fairly powerful agent of the Lion. Just a reminder. Please. Yes, please. This person here, didn't he suddenly disappear last time you shot him, Tin? Some Last psionic time I ability. Put some through his legs, yes. yes, and he disappeared. We couldn't track him. Thango, no, bring there the was nothing to track. And from a, a side room, a junior Templar produces a metal bucket and puts it on the, the guy's head. There. Now his way will be foiled. Constantine, please send out the messages you can to establish some kind of contact with Salabar Luba and let me know as soon as you hear something. And to the rest of you, uh, thank you once more for your service to the city. And so leaving the uh, unidentified Urukite preacher with a bucket on his head. Can you have a bucket? Yes, you can have a bucket, Aaron out. <laughs> In fact, you could put it on your bucket list. <laughs> Today's dad jokes are brought to you by <laughs> dad. Yeah. So, and so, so sorry, from. <laughs> I'm nothing to say. I'm you not moved mad. Three and I'm a just half. Disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> is a universal truth. Artisan Way. Far quieter than Caravan Way. It is here that the main tradesmen and various uh, trade guilds of the city have their home. At this time of night, it's a winding thoroughfare that leads from the arena out to the side gate of Tyr. I'll, uh, I'll show you on the big map where you are. On the big map? I like this map. Artisan Way is right here. And you can see it winds its way right through the heart of the Artisan District. Past Salt Sculptor Square and out to the Stadium Gate. Traders and merchants from other cities rarely come to this part of town. This is just good, pure Tyrian stock. There's a few wine houses open, spilling amber light onto the sandy streets. There's a... Uh, uh, a semi-ruined building where the road kind of turns a corner. You can see someone set up awnings and um, there's a delicious smell of cooking sausages coming from that. And you can see a, a dwarf with a small crowd gathered around, some ordering, some standing around eating, some just chatting. As he sees your group winding its way down the road, he waves over. Kip sausages. Best in tier. Come and see what Calbed's kitchen's got to offer you. Tick tick looks at Matthias. Sure, sounds good. I gave you all my money. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I'm getting let some. Me, so let me buy you one then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tin will buy some sausages for himself and Ron. <laughs> what about me? Oh, I'll get you. You just asked too. Matthias. Well, I'll, I'll buy you some too, Tick. <laughs> I'll get you some, and I'll look how big he is, and thinking how many sausages we need to feed him. At least. <laughs> Are you, I'm feeding Ron <laughs> here. Do you have any idea how much this girl can put away? I like to imagine it's like everyone's got like a regular plate, and then me, <laughs> Ra, and Tick Tick just have like a pile. Like, just a carafe, just. 
<laughs> it's like a it's like a like a paper bag with just lots of sausages in it. <laughs> I mean, I won't yeah. lie. I'm sure that Bengal has a massive pile too. He is a halfling after all. Yes. Well, Calbert beckons you over. Welcome to Calbert's kitchen. He says, smiling up at you all. It is my life's focus to produce the best sausages in Tyr. We if are I will make you very rich. If I fail, my spirit will become a banshee and haunt this shop until the sun burns black and the moons fall from their orbit. That is my promise to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marriage. How much are the sausage? Oh, yes. you're, 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 good. you're good. Yes. Okay. Sausage now. Yes. His wife at the back is kind of busy wrapping up what appears to be a fairly large Gorak steak. He's not joking. I I love your passion. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure Cabin. they're great. They will be. Five beads per sausage. Is that, is that, is that the normal going rate? That's a pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, for a kip sausage, yeah. that's not bad. That's like half a bit. How many can I get for 66 beads? How many do you want? <laughs> for 66 beads, you yeah. could get uh, 12. I get 12. Okay, think... you kind of pour over a handful of lead beads. And uh, seeming out of nowhere, Calbert has a dozen sausages wrapped up. There you go, young sir. Yeah. Ooh. Tin will get 12 as well. <laughs> <laughs> Giving beads 11 to Ra, one for him. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you uh, Min and Max? Yes, dear. And, and Tick Tick, I saw you at the arena. Ah, yes. Now sausage. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, all right, all right. <laughs> One of one of the ones I was given, I will throw towards uh, Tick Tick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie; they're fucking amazing sausages. Oh yeah, oh, beautifully, baby. slightly crisp down the outside, succulent, warm, not too hot, nice and warm all the way through, and here and there, studded throughout the length of the sausage, are little nuggets of spice. Okay. Ooh, it sounds was that, was really good, but you're gonna have to stop describing it because now I want to eat fucking sausages. So, <laughs> soup son of cheese. Mm. Oh, a hint of chili. Oh, oh it's my just, god. Oh, it's hang, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on a minute. Sensation. I mean, we need some sausages. <laughs> after, after she said whatever. One, after eating one, you just see tears start rolling down Ross's <laughs> cheeks, and she just gets up and just gives him a hug. <laughs> she like bends down to hug him like thank you i would pat you on the arm there there very good very good told you they were good sausages yeah how many do you want tick tick uh, uh that's a silly question um my good man could you just feed this feed tick tick for me i'll have one and i'll just hand it uh i'll, I'll hand him I'll over about, i'll eat about two dozen i think is it 25? Okay, so that's 125 beads, which is 12 and a half bits. So I'll give him the beads. 125 beads, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. What Can we, mean? like, rattles the, uh, the, the lead beads away? And yeah, you weren't kidding. You're, I'm taking a damn good, uh, damn good taking tonight. Thank you very much, uh, my lords and ladies. I've got um, a sausage in each hand, and I'm just putting it in. Bra, how many more do you need? <laughs> <laughs> can we can we get like a map maker or someone to pinpoint this place so we can come here? Oh my god, I'm gonna come here every day. Albert's kitchen at the first corner on Artisan's Way. Everybody oh. here knows me, and now you know why. Yes. Right. What'll it be, my friend? Gorak steak. Yes. She's just getting it ready in the back. I I want one of them as well. One of everything? Yes. Gorak, Gorak steak is one bit. Okay, I'll give him a I bit. I have a steak too, oh my god. Tick tick, do you want <laughs> okay. a steak? Tick tick, do you want steak? Yes. <sighs> He'll just pay for 12 <laughs> steaks. Okay. He'll take one, give 11. <laughs> Well, we can we can assume this is ta these can this is taking care of on your monthly cost of living. Uh, so. yeah. What uh what you can't the, the poor of ones of you can't afford. Uh, Matthias can almost certainly um, 
Well, I did just give Matthias all of my money, so... Uh, yes. I, I've been, paying, like, I've been money. removing the money from my sheet. <laughs> Should I add it back? I love the idea of us all, like, coming forward to all these farmers expecting payment, and we're like, we're sorry, but we spent all of it on sausage and <laughs> Sausage and steak. We but have nothing for you. don't understand. If you've been to the first corner of Artisan's Way, you, you will know, understand. You know. I think I know yes. what I'm having for lunch today, man. Yeah, same. <laughs> I had sausages tonight, so you can blame it on that. <laughs> <laughs> Real pork ones, too. Oh, my God. You tricked me into going to the shops. I hate you. Just tell, just tell the farmers, listen. <laughs> I'm an atheist, and I saw God. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a sausage. Okay, so um, your belly is full, and something of the filth of the day eased away by good, honest lard. You find yourself just a few doors down from Mother Damaras, the apothecary healer midwife. She's sitting out on her front step in a, uh, uh, a little wicker rocking chair, um, chatting to what actually looks like uh, a pair of Templars. They're kind of leaning against the side of her shack. One of them's sipping what appears to be a, a smoking tea. Just passing the time of day with her. She sort of rocks back and forward, um, knitting something with long bone knitting needles. Evening, daddies. And so Tin will just pull his hood back oh. a little bit. Oh. Let me look at you. The Templars nod to her and just move on down the street, walking slowly down toward a bar at the far end. She pulls herself up from her seat, shuffles over toward uh, toward where you are, Ra. Bend down here, dearie. Bend down. Let me let me have a proper look at you. She she'll she'll take a knee. And she, she runs her fingers like they're like old sticks wrapped in leather uh, more than anything else but they just kind of flutter across the bones you feel them across your cheeks and around where the bones are anchored into your skull you've had these all your life have you yeah yeah I don't re remember a time without them not really no that was an unkindness it happens sometimes. The beast head uh, is still found within many of the giant bloodlines. Uh, I've not seen a pair so impressive of this in quite a while. But they should have been taken off you as a babe. But it was a cruelty to leave them on you. Ah, uh, but almost imagine her leaning back and slapping the sides of your arms. If you have grown up big and strong, nevertheless, so um. I'll say it's not done you any harm. Well, apart from the obvious. So, um, your little friend Constantine tells me that you were yearning to have these removed. Um, I, I, I was told that if I, if I didn't, it might kill me. Hmm. She, she turns your head side to side. Maybe, but you're a gladiator, so. You know, there's a good chance of being killed in the arena first. You have to look on the positive side. <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just teasing you, dearie. I'm just teasing you. Yes, it's a serious condition. Um, her hand runs down your, uh, your, your shoulder scars. How's Lubar? I see. Uh, yeah, formally. Yes, yes. No, I've, um... You're not the first servant of House Lubar that I've seen come through here. They're, uh... They're an unpleasant bunch. Did you know, um... Rikus used to be a slave of House Lubar. Rikus being... The gladiator. The... Oh, yes. Yes, Rikus. I, the, the champion gladiator. <laughs> He's from Uruk. Doesn't tell anyone. Oh. No. I, I didn't know that. Well, oh, you're in good company. So. I like your cat. Oh, uh, the kivit. Yes. Um, don't let it bite you. It's poisonous. Oh, no. 
I could I could saw these off, no problem. And uh, I say there's a very good chance that I could extract them from the well from the skull, and you're very likely to survive the procedure. Uh, what, what? What? I didn't know that there was a chance of me dying from this. You did yes. not mention that. There is a small possibility that my old hands might prove infirm against such large and hefty horns, and I might accidentally drive one further into your skull, killing you. But I think it's probably a small risk. What, like a survival shocks risk? I wouldn't like to talk in AD and D second edition game mechanics, but that might <laughs> that might well be a something along those lines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any, is there any way? Uh, one of us with our strength can assist to so that, that way the, the the risk of damage to our friend is less it's delicate work and i i I'm really will do need a little bit of space we're going to we're going to lay rye here down on uh on um the big table in the kitchen and i'm going to set up as many candles as i can and i'm going to get to work and you young man are going to stay away or i'll stab you <laughs> With my knitting needles. And she kind of playfully prods at you with one of the needles. By the way, um, will, the question is, will these, um, will, will they ever grow back or they will be gone permanently? Uh, if you don't want them to grow back, I'll cauterize them. Oh, no, yes. Uh, what do you Sorry, say? I just wanted to say that while this is going on, Tupac is standing in the background, licking his arms. <laughs> <laughs> Someone watch. clip that. Mantis videos, haven't you? <laughs> well, he's got um, juice all over him. Yeah. Tin's checking his bag. He's looking at the the two healing selves. Yes. <laughs> like, if they can be cauterized, um, yes, please. Come on then. Um, let's um, let's get you seen to. Um, ma'am, do you rem if you are having them cauterized, Ra? That is your choice. Yeah, I mean, it saves it happening again, right? Once this is done, then you remember the second part of our deal. Read the Zoom chat. <laughs> Mark. Me? Yes, I sent you a I've message got, as what the I've second part of it is. A million fucking messages around here. Just say it. Um, okay, so if she get him, gets him cauterized after it's done, he's removing the pinky off his left hand. Okay, what good. The fuck? She's losing something forever. It was his idea, so he will also lose something. The pinkies again. The pinky though. <laughs> what is this, what is this about this idea. show and bloody Ooh. pinkies? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Actually, I rolled a. I rolled. He's getting a life-changing surgery. I'm going to remove my pinky in solidarity. Yes. Perfect. Listen, there's only so much I could do. Yeah, I'm gonna lose something as well, Mark. Cut your arm off. Take I your rolled. Eyes off. I did roll a what? I did. I did roll a die to see which finger it was, and when it landed on Pinky, I kind of laughed. No, I will just say that's worse. I've learned, I've learned from prior experience as to offering no, my Pinky to pinkies. a demon, the and so Pinkies and are actually very important. No, and I and would so, actually, I and, actually not knowing about this. Did did Tin tell Ra this deal? No, he did not. No, he did not. Um, so anyway, um, with that, um, that pinky that'll be going away, um, Rob will be getting, uh, my, uh, my inspiration die. <laughs> okay. Weirdly transactional, but I, I think it works. The pinky Ra. is a d20. Before too long, you are stretched out on a heavy agafagri wood kitchen table in the back of Mother Damrash's shack. I mean, you occupy the entirety of the table, your feet hang off the end, but she's made your head as comfortable as she can. And indeed, all around the room are candles, glowing golden light, scented and clear all across you. Drink this. It'll take the edge off things. Uh, Ra will, will drink it. And as she is, she's like shaking. She probably spills some out of nerves. She steadies your hands and it's uh, thick. It's clearly cank honey fermented in some way. But it hits your head almost as soon as it hits your stomach. A powerful 
slow hadron bodies rush follows and before long you're slumping down onto the table and being laid into position as uh, long waves of lassitude pour across your body a mild sedative of some sedative of some sorts because you realize a few seconds after it's actually started that she's going to work on your horns you can hear it feel it within your skull this and she soars methodically and yeah there are these bright sparks in the darkness that surrounds you slivers of pain that suddenly stop and then you hear a loud that's one. And then the sawing now begins, uh, sawing sound begins again. Sounding around the room, the rest of you watch as Mother Damras with far more efficacy and skill than she has let on. Saws first through one, setting it aside, and then another of Ra's horns. You have a brief glimpse of the cavernous sockets that have become her face. The skin folded in and around where the horns were. Even the eye sockets themselves on the inside have a slight whorl to them where the shape of the bone has fashioned its way through her skull. But it's really like only a, a glimpse for a couple of seconds that stays hanging in your mind for long minutes after because almost immediately Mother Damras has busied herself around the body, packing poultices into the holes, wrapping gentle bandages around, smearing ointment around the outside, and then sets back and taps Ra on the shoulder. You're done, dearie. You're done. We're done? Help her sit up. Come on, give me a hand here. Uh, Tin will go over and help her up from her left side, putting his left hand out onto a, the piece of wood. <laughs> yep. Um, Ra, you sit, and the first thing you notice, your head feels light. It feels far too light, like it's bobbing around on your shoulders, as if it almost were threatened to come loose. You realize there's a, you've, your entire life you've been compensating, pulling it back against the weight of the horns, pulling it forward. It's just gone. For a moment you feel like you're going to fall over backwards. That's, that's really strange. Um, thank, thank you. Um, and, and she kind of turns to where she thinks everyone is and just, like, do, okay. I, do, I, do I look okay? Now roll me a system strong survival, please. Oh. You've got inspiration, though, if you want to roll twice. Take I'd the be best. really surprised if she, if she fails this. It's, yeah, it's, I don't it, know what. There should, should be a little click button just next to it on your sheet. Where, where, where is that? On the, on, on, look under attributes, and it's uh, to the right of constitution. Uh, oh, God, oh, don't okay, roll so high. Just, like, do two of those, right? No, just, just click it once. System shock survival. There we go. And that's a 74. Okay. And that's a pass. No unpleasant delayed reaction. No few moments of conversation and then dropping to the floor dead. Mother Damras's uh, handiwork appears to have held fast. Thank you. I really appreciate it. She takes your hands and turns them up this way. And then you feel something heavy placed in each hand. Feels rough, contours. You realize, of course, what these are. Your horns. What does the, the spot on the side where the horns are cut off, what does that look like now? It's flat and now is, is blackened like a... Like a like fused, almost seared shut. And she's artfully smoothed the edges around so it doesn't look uh, <clears throat> doesn't look particularly bad. But there's I'm... you've got about you've got about an inch or two out of your skull, and then after that it's it's uh, it's flattened. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I imagine like hair's probably grown around it, so now it's gone. It's yeah. probably just going to fall over the top of it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tin will offer you the, uh, like, just over your the one horn in your hand, he'll give you the um, the tied off visor with the uh, silk. Uh, well, you, you should wait with that. I want at least a week of, uh, of changing those uh, those bandages, and then he can put your, your fancy doodad in place. Yeah. And Damaris gives you a little pot appointment. Change the bandage oh. every every two days and uh, slather that around the um, the pockets. Do, do, do I do I look okay though? Um, you you're fine. You're bandaged. You're bandaged. It's fine. Okay. And uh, I have the ointment here, and we will make sure you're well taken care of. You look fine, dearie. Damaris says. I go on. Off with you. An old woman has to get herself off to bed at some point. Um, can can I can I pay you for for this? It's all taken care of. Thank you. She looks to Tin when she says that. You're welcome. I uh, I help up Ra. Good, cause I can. <laughs> I will I will gladly take Tick Tick's uh, greasy arm from licking. It's clean it. now. It's clean. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll let you guys know that I'll be out in a moment. No, no. Um, yeah, he 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 offers her support. All right, I'm and you, uh, yeah, you help her out into the street. Bagal, bagal. Of course, no one's really considered the main issue here. What are you supposed to hold on to now? No, that's what I was just thinking. How am I going to sit on her head if I've got nothing to hold on to? She's got pockets. You can hold on to the pockets. No, I'm you not just stick your fingers in there and wall sockets. You can sit on her shoulders. Yeah, but like the ho you don't get it clearly. You've never sat on her shoulders before. You don't get it. Hear There's me out. Comfortable. Hear me out, and she will grab the horns and put them on her shoulders like that, and there's so it's like handlebar. Oh my god. You can have them made this into like me shoulder. This makes me sure happy and sad. Like you, can you can make like a special harness out of your horns. <laughs> oh Just god. like a bridle. <laughs> yeah. A, a saddle, basically. Onwards. <laughs> that seems <laughs> that seems terrible. That seems terrible. It seems terrible to cut off your pinky, but here we are. <laughs> So, ha so has Tin. Speaking has of which, there's your answer. Uh, Let's say it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> yeah, he's so, in the in the shop. There's some conversation going on about that regard right now. I was gonna say, so like, Tin hasn't. So it's not been said aloud. So like, I no, can't he hasn't. He that. hasn't let anybody onto um, his insane okay, plan. Yeah, that's fine. So, that's so fine. Uh, Mark, is that the message? Is that what she tells him inside? That's what. That's that's room? literally what she says to you. Yes. Um, he walks out. He has um, all of his uh, all of his fingers. Okay. Did she, did um, but she he tell will, you to he, stop being uh, a I, will, I will say to Ra, if at any more time... More or less. You, yeah, yeah, basically, more or less. Um, he'll tell Ra, if at any time you regret this, you tell me. I, I will... What do you think we should do with these? Um, well, you make weapons. Why don't you make something out of them? So that, that way, you know, they're still with you. Or make something for someone else, and that way they can, you can always be by their side. You can always be a weapon that they have with them, whether you're there or not. One okay. day you will find your place, and this is a way you could have them continue with you. Okay, I like that. Thank you. I figured you would. And with the uh, banded, like the silk, I think Tin got her, because she can't put it on her head yet. She's gonna like tie it around her arm and like knot it so it's it's on still, but it's yes. not like on her head yet. Gotcha. Good. At the end of a long day, the last day before the war, Matthias Ravilla is waiting. Well, boys. Apparently, uh, there has been um, some slight uh, kerfuffles in the even in the street. Um, a, uh, a passing merchant was cut down by uh, uh, a pair of seemingly innocuous nobles, except nobody could recall from what merchant house he was, and no one remembers seeing those nobles in the street at any time before then. Uh, who can say what that might be? 
quite possibly Synthus Bard being ushered away from the house. One of your servants tells you that Templars have been to the house already to collect the body of the Tirithani Bard. And uh, that Vildi and Tirithani himself is being summoned into the city to account for his crimes against Kalak. Rikus and Neva and Sidira are waiting for you in the guest lounge. Sorry, Rikus says. I said I would just come by when I was ready. Your servants have been most uh, hospitable. Thank you. Good to hear. Have you eaten? Yeah, I have eaten. Sidira is sitting in a, a high chair on the far side of the room, helping herself to your wine. You haven't seen her since the day of the Grand Malay. Those of you who are on the battlefield floor saw her very briefly just as Tick Tick threw his spear when she worked a considerable amount of defiling magic to shatter Kallak's uh, protective wards. She nods. Good to see you again, old friends. Likewise. It's been a while. Uh, it's been a long while, yeah. Yeah, it has. But um, I thought this would be a good time to come out of hiding to discuss the, well, what you need to hear. I've explained some of this to some of you already. Rikus nods to Bagal Bagal and Ra and Tik Tik. But it's been an eventful day and matters have changed somewhat. Tithian has ordered the creation of a strike force to hunt down and destroy the Veil of Stone. He believes if we can time it properly, we can destroy the Veil of Stone, cripple the Vanguard, and reveal the location of the main army. Tyr's main army will then ambush the lions. Do we have any idea what that uh, Veil of Stone looks like? It's uh, an obsidian orb, some two feet across, Sidira says. She produces a small orb. This contains a powerful disjunction that can destroy it. And she puts it on your table. <sighs> what Sidira is not saying, but she's trying to subtly infer, Rika says, is that you've been selected for this strike force. I've never not asked. by me. Tithian requested you all personally. These are not uh, stealth operatives. Well, I had come here hoping to uh, poach you, Constantine. But I didn't realize that I would be commandeering you and your companions. <clears throat> In order for our strike team to be effective, we need to know the direction we're heading. We have an army. We don't know where it is. In what direction will we be headed? So, Neva says, Tithian proposes <clears throat> a small, fairly lightly armed group who will scout ahead into the desert and attempt to locate the vanguard that has the Veil of Stone. Engage them and destroy it. And we will need to set up lines of communication that allow us to position our main forces so that we can ambush Hamanu's main army. This is actually where I will be bowing out, my friends. I will not be able to... Uh handle this kind of action. This is not for me. None of you can. And if the rest of you could bow out, I would do so as well. He's sending you out there to die. 
You know far too much about him. Do you know what's happening right now? Right this second? Vildeen Tirthani is being subjected to a mock trial. He'll be lucky to see the dawn if they don't hang him from the city gates. How Stell is being raided. Some of those people working in there are Tyrians. Once the mob hears about this, they'll gut the place. He knows that you know of his part in all of this. Hmm. But uh, I'm not going to let him get rid of you that easily. And what will you be doing? Giving you the best damn chance that you can. <laughs> this morning, after you left the uh, arena, I told the other gladiators what you'd said to High Templar Panther. And I immediately had a couple of dozen of them volunteer to serve as your personal honor guard. You know who was at their head? Wenzer. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you guys kick his ass at the Red Kank the other day? Well, yeah. he made an impression. He says you're the kind of people he wants to fight beside. <clears throat> so I'm giving you Wenzer and 20 of my best gladiators. House Minthor, I don't know what you did for them. They love you. They pledged troops to march at your banner. The Minthor troops are good people. And strangest of all, this afternoon, I had a bunch of carpenters and stonemasons and plasterers turn up and ask if they could be taught how to fight. You saved their leader, I understand. Some fat head called Turloff? Yes. I want to re-establish uh, something. This is a small strike force, correct? It needs to be small enough to move quickly, but sizable enough to defend itself against Urukite patrols. How many of these gladiators are over 10 feet tall? How many half giants can I provide you with? No, I'm asking because I'm trying to figure out how many half giants I'm going to have to hide. Well, if that's your preference, I'll leave it to one. He nods toward Ra. Well, I'll, I'll leave the picking of the troops that are most comfortable to the team. I'm just responsible for hiding them. It's who they're most comfortable fighting beside. Meanwhile, I'm going to need somebody to teach craftsmen to be soldiers. And I'm not that guy. Well, there's a dwarf who's been training militia outside the city for a week or two now. A little guy called Portek. No, we don't know that guy. Yeah, he's one of us. Oh, yeah, we know that guy. Right. Of course you do. Listen, this is a... Uh, this is a dead kank salad, right? There's nothing about this that smells, tastes, or looks good. It's clear what Tithian is doing. But if we don't expose Hamanu's army, there'll be no tear left. And unlike Tithian, I don't expect you to head out into the desert and die. You come with? <laughs> My fine 
chitoned friend, I will be leading the main army. Tithian has given that job to me. Ah. Sadira laughs into her wine. I mean, can you think of anybody less suited to commanding a large body of armed men with discipline and rigor? Tithian is thinking about what comes after the war. So... He wants you dead. He wants Rika's disgraced. Somehow expects to survive it himself. Yeah, well, that's my old master. Hmm. I, I'm just wondering how he thinks he can talk himself out of this uh, <laughs> with our mountains, guys. But... <laughs> He's slippery, I grant you that. Yeah, I don't understand how we uh, got any of this past Kalak to begin with. How soon are we expected to leave? The muster begins tomorrow. We'll take a day or two to get that taken care of. But three days from now, we need to be on the road. Is that enough time for you to get a group of men in some kind of order? I don't think we have a choice. It's going to have to be. Huh. One more thing. He turns to you, Bengal Bengal. Were you causing trouble down Shadow Square today? What kind of trouble? So I heard there was some rabble-rousing preacher there trying to stir up malcontents. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we've had a surprising uptick in people wanting to be gladiators. And a lot of them are saying that they saw Min Max or oh, Death Theater, they don't agree. That they saw you guys in Shadow Square today. And that you showed them it's not just about cutting people to pieces. And yet paradoxically that makes them want to sign up to cut people to pieces. But I mean I'm not gonna Well, people do what they think is right. Well I was thinking. Is there some use you can put them to, Constantine? Because if I tell them that Min Max are looking for volunteers, these are just regular folk of the city, right? They're not fighters. Most of them aren't even stonemasons and carpenters. They're just <clears> folk of <throat> the so Warrens. I can, I can answer that question very easily by asking another. Ah, uh, Ra, Pingal Pingal. How happy are you for her everyday people to die in your name? Uh, no. That's actually what the thing was actually about, was trying to get people to not die. That's our answer. Leave I them here, idea. train them to protect their homes. Idea, yes, yes. Like Clutch Guardian. Protect city streets. Yeah, we need, we need people here at least in tier to protect tier while we take most, if not all, of the gladiators out of the city. We can train them up here and let them defend this place. Okay. Anybody that's, that's offering themselves to us should be sure to know that they have a very high likelihood of dying. And the question is, do they want to die out there with us? Or do they want to die here with their families if it comes to that? Chances of them living here, much higher than with us. Well, why don't we... I mean, don't get me wrong. Myself, Bengal, and Tick Tick are gladiators, but we're more than that now. We could come up with a name for what we are now, and instead of people applying to be gladiators, they could apply to be that instead. But take it on the streets, just like, like everyone else said, just protect their town, but maybe... If they have a name for it, maybe they might want to join that instead. My God, are we unionizing? 
what's more powerful well, than a we... gladiator would probably be a hero, and trust me, you don't want to be one of those. A protector. Protector, great protector. name. Or guardian. Mm. Guardian. Tick, tick. A tick, tick. tick. A tick, tick. Well, Wait, is that say... what that means? Why yes. does... Tick, tick mean guardian. We could always say, um, join the clutch. My name not Tick, tick. Tick, tick title. Oh! Well, now I feel like an ass. Um... All right, we could call them um, protectors or guardians. Um, join Tick Tick, you know? There you go. The clutch. The clutch. Uh, this, this clutch is getting really big. Um, this, is, this is very interesting to me. You know, the Council of Advisors have already established the Tyrian Guard, but they don't go into the Warrens. The Templars police the Golden City. I've heard of a group called the Crimson Helms starting up here in the Noble Quarters private guard force. They so will be they... looking out for the, the little man, you know. Exactly. They'll be looking out for whoever's paying them. We need exactly. these people to look after the community. Protectors for the Warrens. Exactly. So the protectors. Um, there you go. So figure out the people, these uh, craftsmen um, and these individuals see where their hearts lie if they lie here with their families being doing their best to protect them and if need be dying for them then let them stay if they do not have such a ailment i guess they can come with us and potentially die out there but they should exactly. know what they're giving up there's more likelihood of them surviving here than with us we're taking a small strike force to take on a vanguard no, well, I knew I made the right choice with you, uh, Constantine. You have it on the level and turn out like it is. I just don't want to see people die. Kron's mm. really ob just like thumbs upping you, thinking it's like like it's on the sly, but it's just really <laughs> obvious. Like, <laughs> wait, who's she doing that to? To Tin. <laughs> the Rika stands. All right. Outside the city gates tomorrow at dawn, we will assemble the forces at your command and we'll put a plan together that won't get us all killed in the desert. Let's put a better thing together. Who, who wants to command this? I'm the worst person. <sighs> I'm happy being an advisor, but somebody needs to be a face and that's not me. I... Rika slaps you on the shoulders. That's why I chose you. I think you're perfect for it, Tin. People don't like me. We need somebody they like. They like you. They certainly don't like me. Me and Tick Tick are out. Poor Tech or Matthias can be the face. <laughs> I like to think Rar and Bengal are just kind of like... No. <laughs> no, if I see that, he'll go... We have the Ra. most charisma. <laughs> okay, we have two things against us here. Ra, you would be perfect, but you're healing. Bengal, Bengal. They know about halflings. What about halflings? They're probably going to think they're a meal. Om nom nom. Uh, uh, have I eaten a single person in the they time don't know that each other? They don't know that. You hurt me. Uh, every uh -huh. time you put a piece of jerky in your mouth, they think, is that a human? That okay. Well, fine. I'll enter every single room, every new person I speak to. By the way, I'm <laughs> I see. We, we, we yes, but you, you are Min Max. You are. We need somebody who can be a face that can be available. You'll be with gladiators. We need somebody who can move between the groups. Portek and Matthias can do that. I think. Well, I, think my, I see I, how it is then. Rika's last. Right. Let's leave them to it. It's clear they're in for a long night. Does Sidira stands. Want to send for Portek? You see Sidira's actually taking the wine bottle with her. Good luck, she says. We'll see you tomorrow. I've heard about these. We should do a vote. Of what? A vote. Everyone puts a vote in for who they think should be the, the face. 
of what it sounds like something a politician would do. I assume that we send a uh, servant or someone to get Portek. Yeah, Neva just regards you all, shakes her head and smiles, and then leaves, following Rikus and Sadira into the street. Um, at this point, I think the camera will pull back from the villa, the sounds of your arguing voices fading off into the distance as the end credits roll on uh, the last night before the war. We will we'll leave it there, I think, for one week. <laughs>